Okay, we are live. We are live. Come on, jazz hands, jazz hands. Let's see, Mike from MW Tactical. He's doing some kind of weird eye covering up, moving the the hand thing. Walter Keller's doing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We are live. I hope you got your big girl panties on. This is episode one eight seven. Do you guys know what one eight seven? What the code one eight seven means? Oh, is that from the movie you're asking me about? No, no, no. The, we, we are talking about bad boys, like bad boys for life. What's you know, the what's the bad? Who knows what the bad boys theme is? What you gonna do when they come for you, bad oh, boys? Oh, bad boys. Yeah, I know that theme. What yeah. you gonna do? Okay, but that's from uh, what? That's from what's that thing? Um, cops. 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 That's from cops. Yeah, that's from cops. But they still they, that's still the theme of the bad boys, guys. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about that movie tonight because guess what? Bad Boys Three is back on. For anyone who knows what bad is there anyone out there who doesn't know what the bad boys movies are about? And we're gonna lock it on Walter Keller right there. I have not a clue. Yeah. Let me should I read the message to you guys? Let's see. So I told Walter, you know what? I, I sent Walter this message. I'm gonna read my text to Walter. It's the Wayne Brothers, right? Right now. So I said, uh, have you ever seen Bad Boys One or Two? The movies. Walter goes. The Wayan Brothers movies, you know, they are, and then and then he says, "No, not really." <laughs> so my response was, "Oh my lord!" Well, so sorry. there you go. It's not the Wayans Brothers; it's Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Will. Will okay. Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence. There you go. Obviously, this is a gun movie that Walter has never seen. Apparently, oh, a gun um, movie really. There's there's no tanks. There's no tanks in this one. So maybe in Bad Boys Three there'll be some tanks, and Walter will actually watch it. Do I have to see it just for you? <laughs> yeah, they're really good movies. Uh, Mike, have you seen these movies? Oh, you know I have, man. Um, plenty of times of being um overseas. Oh, it was yeah. on the replay list over, <laughs> over and over and over. over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just mad they didn't contact me to be in Bad Boys oh, Three. Yeah, yeah. Walter, the shame on you. I mean, this is like the Bad Boys movies take place in Florida. They actually take place in Florida, man. So that's one reason why you should have seen them. There's okay, a, okay. There's a mega. I'm not even gonna a, a mega a mega dookie ton of guns in there and shooting. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Basically, everything gets shot up in this movie. In these movies, so okay. And are both uh, those actors anti-gun? Uh, I don't know. That be I don't, I don't think Will Smith is. Yeah, I don't know where Will Smith is at. I'm not even sure where Martin Lawrence is it is at. I can tell you right now, there's no black man with money that's anti-gun. I don't care what the hell he tells you. Are you sure you're saying you, you sure about that? Now? If he has, he he could pretend he's anti-gun. If he does, if he is, if he is black, and he, it's like a Jewish guy being anti-gun. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, no I don't get it. I don't get it. And I have a brother-in-law that way, and I won't. Yeah, use him, and I, I don't get it. Uh, yeah. You know. You know, I they might yeah. say some nonsense, but they I don't really believe that they believe Survey, that. Oh, sorry about that. Survey says that you might need that gun again. Yeah, so someone is saying Will Smith is anti-gun. Scott Kimball says Will Smith is anti-gun. Uh I don't know. I don't know. I listen, when people I, I don't really believe any celebrities out there, anyone that has money is really anti-gun, because when someone's coming <laughs> for their stuff. <laughs> They're gonna want some guns to protect their stuff, and well, a lot of them have bodyguards yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, um, whatever, you know, yeah, we yeah, we yeah. don't believe it. Yeah, they uh they always have armed guards. Yeah. You know, and... Now I know that now I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not trying to speak for Will Smith or Martin Lawrence. I know that I've seen Will Smith doing the same uh, gun fu stuff that <laughs> Keanu Reeves did. <laughs> Gun right, because he was actually trained by uh, what's his name? What's the name of the guy that does the gun fu stuff? I forgot his name now. That uh, Turan Tactical. Oh, so so Will Smith trained, did all that kind of stuff when he was doing the uh, Suicide Squad movie and all of that. But who knows what any of that means? These are really good gun movies because they don't solve crimes. <laughs> they just shoot a lot of guns. Yeah, well, I'm saying they don't solve crimes with like Q-tips or. Oh, oh, you know. oh, oh, so it's not a MacGyver thing? Yeah, they're not sleuths, <laughs> you uh, know. They're shoots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's lots of guns in these movies, so if they're really anti-gun, they should not make Bad Boys Three. But 
that that's like been a thing that's been going on and off because they were supposed to have made Bad Boys three and four, and apparently it's back on. So I thought I'll talk about that because these are one of my like favorite gun movies, you know. And uh, Walter's never seen it, which is a shame. Have you ever seen Hot Fuzz, Walter? Nope. The movie Hot Fuzz. Nope. Okay, that's a British movie. I thought you would have seen it because you look at all. Because <laughs> I'm a Brit. I'm a, a, a you're an Anglophile. Anglophile. That's the word. Yeah. So you would have seen that. And one of my fa my favorite lines in the movie is the uh, the guy goes, "You ain't seen Bad Boys too." <laughs> <laughs> he keeps asking the, his partner, "You ain't seen Bad Boys too." So anyway, I uh, that's what I have to say to you, Walter. That you oh, Walter's just sipping. Tea. <laughs> Walter sipping from. I haven't ate yet either, which is. I, what is wrong with you? I, well, I got home, like I said. Yeah, yeah. there you go. I got my I got my tea cup too. You're not yes. the only. You're not the only one. Um, I yeah. got home at six thirty from the shop, so that's why I haven't had anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greg ninety eight K says it's going to be bad. <laughs> be bad geezers three. Because <laughs> they they're getting. I guess they're getting kind of old. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about a bunch of other stuff going on in the news. There is a ton of stuff going on. First up, and let me remind everyone out there: please hit the thumbs ups. Okay, we got. We've already got over a hundred people in the audience here. We need you guys to hit the thumbs ups. I don't know where what number we're at with the thumbs ups. I'm going to go look into that. I'm going to remind you guys here. We also have to thumbs up ourselves, which <laughs> that didn't sound well. Yeah, that's a fun move that some people do in the privacy of their own home. Thumbs up yourself. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the thumbs can be used for lots of things, I guess. But let's do the kinds of th the YouTube thumbs ups. That's what I'm talking okay. about. OK, do the YouTube thumbs ups on our own selves here. We you know, we got to get it going. I can hear I can hear feedback from somewhere. Lola, seriously? I'm seriously, looking, Lola? What? I'm looking for the that's not the right. Um, um, I, I have I have one we're talking on here, then I have another one on the side here. And I'm, I got to get the no, right I one. Oh, okay, I think that was Lola. That was Lola. So I'm going to go and uh, thumbs up it. Oh, there Mike, I don't know if you could keep tabs is what we got going on right now. We got like 70 thumbs ups right now. So I, I, I hope everyone would go out there and thumbs up. Boom, I just hit it. Yeah, and I'm going to check in. So, Mike, what's going on with you, man? Not too much. Um, had another joyful day. Nice weather. Um, running around, knocking out some errands. Decided to come on and say what's up to the good people and hang out with Strange and um, Walt. Strange Walt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was running for, what, something in 2019, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the strange Walt ticket. <laughs> uh, we got creepy Joe Biden already. We don't yeah. need no strange Walt. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just want to be minister of destruction. That's all. Min I want to be minister of finance. And then if oh, you're right. minister of destruction, we'll really have a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. You will buy. You will buy everything I sell. Then when we got our own yeah. personal B fifty two, we'll have yeah. lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey, dropping bombs. Why don't you just go with the stealth bomber instead of the B fifty two? Well, I like old school, you know. <laughs> ain't mad yeah. at you. I ain't mad at yeah. you. <laughs> First act, we're gonna do like uh, James Bond villain style, and we're gonna lay a lot of dynamite along the fault lines of California. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we're gonna get. Uh, what was that? I forgot the name of the James Bond villain that uh, was trying to um, float off California. There was it one was of those, really. Yeah, that move, that particular James Bond movie had Grace Jones, and then it had, um, oh man, I forgot the name of the guy. Someone IMDb. It. It's a known actor. That it's like a really creepy guy. This is one of his first movies. It even had Dolph Lundgren in there playing like some weird Russian clone. Uh, huh. You guys never saw that one? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, it had. It was uh, Roger Moore. Oh yeah, Roger Moore. Yeah. Who Plus, Roger Moore is anti-gun as he's you dead. Know what? Roger Moore passed away, I believe. Did he? Oh. Yeah. So Did he's he? no longer with us. That was recent. Was that recently? Did I not? Oh, so, yeah. Roger Did Moore. I not? Did I not acknowledge the passing of the Roger Moore? Let me uh, double check that here. Lola saying. Uh, yes, 2017. Yeah, Christopher, oh, Wal Christopher Walken was in that movie. It's called A View to a Kill. A View to a Kill. Okay. Yeah, and it had Roger Moore, Grace Jones, Tanya Roberts. Uh, Christopher Walken. What, why does Tanya Roberts sound familiar? That's she was one of the um, uh, de, uh, Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels. Gee, I think one of the later Charlie's Angels. Yeah, I think. Oh, so. really? Oh, okay. 
I thought Tanya Roberts had something to do with Bill Clinton, but no, you're thinking. Um, yeah, Dolph oh, Lundgren was in it too. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren was also. You guys never saw. I, I know the people out there have seen A View to a Kill. I I probably have seen it in my in my in my 007 movie watching, but I couldn't tell you all the details. You know. Mm, it doesn't some, it doesn't print said, movies um, don't movies don't print on me like you do, like that yeah. you know, i don't know somebody said that female's name you said was in playboy tanya roberts yes that's what somebody just said in the chat maybe i think so tanya roberts was famous for something she was she did something something went down with the tanya roberts that's all i can uh, remember from thinking, the 80s. that's not the uh, one that no, uh, not a, not a bill clinton girl brian quick says dolph longren was not in a view to a kill uh brian quick you are wrong, sir. You are wrong. No, I wasn't thinking about Tanya Hardy. Dolph Lundgren <laughs> was in there. He was in there. Okay, now I'm gonna. That's it. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna that's wait. It. Let me pull up IMDb right now. I'm. I'm gonna let you give me the answer. Where's Brian, Where's Babyface when we need him? <laughs> He's like he can type faster than anybody, probably. The, the yeah. Um, Brian Quick is challenging my authority. <laughs> but now, if he's correct. Does he get a patch or a hat? No. Oh, oh. oh man. <laughs> Don't start that. Lowe's going to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, he's not correct. I know that for a fact. So <laughs> I'm not even. <laughs> I'm not even. So here we go. If you go to, to the IMDb's, if you go to the IMDb's, A View to a Kill was 1985. Okay. Starring Roger Moore, who Lola says is no longer alive. So we got to look that up. I said that. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, you said he's not no longer alive, right? So someone's got oh, Michael. Mike, can you look that up? See if uh, Roger Moore is alive. Christopher Walken, uh, Tanya Roberts, Grace Jones. Uh, Tanya Roberts still looks all right for an older lady. Let me see. You got it. Let's look at the full cast. Let's look at the full cast here. Uh, Just looking at Tanya uh, Roberts. Forget about the full cast. Roger Moore, death date May twenty third, twenty seventeen. Yeah. Cause of death: cancer. Tanya Roberts. A View to a Kill. Charlie's Angels. Bingo. I was right. Okay, she was in there. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to find. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find the Dolph Lundgren thing here. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. His character's name was Benz. And yes, he was in there, Dolph Lundgren. Benz? It, Benz, yeah, with a V. Victor. Victor E N Z. Benz. Benz. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, he was some kind of weird clone, but Dol Dolph Lundgren was in there. So, what is it that Brian Quick owed me for that? What would you guys say? What was we didn't really have a bet, so I'm not gonna not gonna hold him against it. But I know it was one of the first movies with Dolph Lundgren in it. Tanya Roberts was Midge in that '70s show. Really? I don't. Know. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's not the ones I remember from that '70s show. <laughs> Brian Quick says, "So sorry, so sorry." No, that's cool. Going well, Gorillas and Guns. Going well. Yeah, yeah. So now let's go. What happened to Roger Moore? Let's go see what happened to Roger Moore. He died. That's what happened to him. Yeah, he died. Yeah. He died of cancer. Oh, okay. Was that was that this year or last year? Seventeen. Last year. Oh, that was twenty seventeen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wow. So was he was he a Sir Roger Moore? Yeah, he was. He was Sir Sir Roger oh, Moore. Look, I got to show you this. Tyvin just sent me a, 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 a pic of himself. He's on the beach with his big ass cigar in his mouth. Look at that. See, Tyvin should have come to the NRA show, man. Yeah, he would have been. Uh, he would have been. He would have been balling. Yeah, he'd have been balling out there. Uh, but I, but um, Cherry Wine tells me he's a lightweight, so oh, he really? can't he can't do them shots and stuff, you know. Oh, oh really. <laughs> 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 well, you got to take it from the wife, you know, the wife yeah. knows, the wife knows. So, yeah, that was that was actually, um, you know, that was actually a funny James Bond movie. You guys should look at that because we'll the, whole, the, whole, again, yeah. the whole thing about that movie is that Christopher Walken's character was trying to like flood California or something like actually flood Silicon Valley. So I think he was supposed to be like a, some kind of tech genius. And remember, this was 1985. So he was, was supposed that to was that was when that whole thing was new, man. Exactly, and and yeah. it, but but it had to do with chips, right? So he was uh, making his own kinds of chips. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. 
Yes. He was making his own kinds of chips, and I think in the movie he was going to flood Silicon Valley so that his chips became more valuable or some kind of oh, craziness man. like that. And there was clones involved, and it was Grace Jones, which, I mean, like, if you've tall, any... Seen, tall, black woman. Yeah, if you've seen any Grace Jones movie, it was basically Grace Jones playing Grace Jones. Was she just a badass? I can't, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, she was, uh, I think she was just crushing dudes' heads or something like that uh. with her thighs. Uh. Okay. <laughs> She was having some kind of aggressive sex, sexual relations with Roger Moore. <laughs> what was her What was her name in the movie? You had to have some cute little name. Oh, uh, let me see. Let, okay, let's go back. Uh, who knows? Does anyone out there know what her name was before I could get back to IMDb? Uh, let me see. What was her name? Mayday. Mayday. <laughs> Mayday. <laughs> Mayday. Yeah. That's a so weird. Grace Jones. Grace she... Jones. Was she huh? playing a commie or something, or what? Mayday, Mayday. No, I think she was like his bodyguard or something. She was uh, Christopher Walken's bodyguard in there. They got a so. when you get with her, you, you got a call from like Mayday, like you're like you're crashing yeah. or something. Mayday. Yeah, you know, but Grace that? Grace Jones was crazy, man. She's you know. Yeah. She's, yeah. See, you know, you know. She always had a wild, uh, wild. Yeah, she was dude. always crazy. Yeah, I remember her from when I was a kid in England because I think. I think her boyfriend was like Adam Ant or something like that. Uh, like one of those yeah. punk rock stars. And she was kind of like a punk rock chick. Yeah, she always had the wild haircut. Yeah. Colored yeah. hair and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was always always pretty crazy. And I think she was in one of the Conan movies. Probably. Yeah. Grace Jones was in, I think, that that movie and one of the Conan movies. I don't I can't remember anything else she was in, but she's pretty, you know. Um, she was pretty crazy. So there you go. There you go, man. There you go. That was a cool. That's a cool movie. You guys should watch it. Anyone who's planning on uh, helping California separate itself from the rest of the country, therefore helping all of the rest of us, so California stops bringing us down. We know, you know, just a little bit more time. Don't be, don't be ready to throw California overboard. City by city, they're revolting in California. So, yeah. I mean, how much taxes does it take for people to get sick people and tired? People are just of the tired bullshit? of the crap. You know, I mean, yeah. You can only take that stuff so long. And then you got Jerry Brown for the governor who's like, you know, hey, let's give every, all the illegals everything, you know, boom. Who's paying for that? People yeah. have to work, man. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in California. We could talk about that all day, man. Yeah. California is just messing up everything. The damn, the, the cafe standards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trump wants to, you know, wants to, um, the, the emission stuff for cars is crazy. You know why you pay so much for a little car is because, they got to meet all these emission standards that change every year. That's based on California, basically. Uh, hello. And yeah. um, so when so when Trump says we're not going to do this stuff anymore, California, we're going to sue. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I'm, I, yeah. I, I don't know what you say to that. I mean, it's like, OK, guess what? You know what? You don't, don't want to play the game. We won't ship you no cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem. I mean, first of all, there's a lot of cars sold in California, and then the then companies building cars to bring them to America, right? They they don't want to make different stuff for the no. rest of America, and then California, yeah. Well, look at this. Look at the, even gasoline. We have a we have summer blends and winter blends and all this monkey business. Why don't you just make gasoline, you know, and stop putting corn and ethanol in the gasoline and you know feed feed people with the corn instead of your air engine yeah you know? i know i know that make that's sense. that's one of the silliest things i've ever seen huh let's take a food source right let's drive up the cost of the things that eat the corn that you let's eat. make that a fuel and now you have to pay more for chicken because the farmers are well the farmers are getting paid to raise the, you know grow the corn to um make ethanol they're getting like they're getting a good deal on that so they don't want to lose that either so it's like a all around it's everybody's scamming everybody you know yeah but that's what it is it's just like you've got you know it's the lobbies right so you have the corn lobbyists yeah and and yeah. they put a lot of money into getting people elected on both sides of the aisle right republicans right. and democrats oh, yeah, oh, yeah. there's no freaking difference it's yeah. all the same yeah. freaking they're, all, they're all in the take yeah. yeah it's all the same bullshit yep, yep. but um well, you've got the coal guys too because like the craziest thing for me is when they start talking about walter clean coal that's okay. like uh, less deadly bullets. Okay, Mister Strange. Uh huh. All these, all these power plants that burn coal all have all this emission stuff that meets all the standards set by the government to to clean the exhaust coming out of the things. We got coal for three, four, five hundred years. 
I know, but the okay. What what I, what, what, what I won't what, I won't argue that you with can you. gasify coal. You can turn it into a slurry and do it that way. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not going to argue that. But to say right, coal, right. coal is. Have you ever handled coal? Yeah, it's it's dirty. Yeah, like why try to bullshit me? Well, no, that's just an expression. Clean coal. I mean, or clean whatever that 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 hole. Yeah. Um, it's uh, you know. But why why turn off a perfectly good energy source and 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 put thousands of people out of work? And yeah, I don't I don't have any problem with that. I just think we shouldn't lie to ourselves about it. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah that that might not have been the best way to go about it, but um, facts yeah. facts would help with that if they just went out and gave the facts. But yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, There's lots of things trying to destroy us, which is a good. I'm going to get back. I'm going to go. I'm going to talk we're about off bad track boy. here. Yeah. I'm going to talk about bad boys three. <laughs> That's going to happen. We're going to talk about other stuff. I don't know if you guys have new stuff. I'm but um, before we get into that, here's because and I'm and I'm just thinking about this because I did pull this up earlier to talk about it. Um, you know, the most. What do you think is the most deadly destructive thing? We're talking about coal. We're talking about fuel. We're talking about all these kinds of things. What do you think is the most destructive thing in the universe? I'll give you a clue, or to us, I'll give you a clue. It's also, it's also, we need it. We absolutely have to have it, but at the same time, it kills us. Water. <laughs> okay, that's a good, that's Oxygen. a good guess, but that's not what I'm talking about, huh? Oxygen. No, no. The sun. Yeah, there you go, Walter. <laughs> See that big cranium. Is is not for naught. <laughs> not for naught. The sun, absolutely, the sun is the most the most dangerous thing. So I saw this. I saw this in a news thing. It says, um, "Now we know what will happen when the sun dies." <laughs> we die. Know, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're gonna die a long time before the sun dies. But uh. yeah, we're definitely gonna be dead by then. Uh, the sun is eventually gonna kill us. Well, also the sun will supernova or whatever, and it'll be done. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, but I don't have to worry about that. I don't think so. Neither do you uh, or anybody else. So. <laughs> um, I mean, it depends on how long you're planning on living, because it's going to happen about five billion years. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so did that report say like an estimated time frame of when the sun was going to burn out? Or? Yeah, yeah. I'll read it for you. Um, so here we go. No one is writing its obituary obituary just yet, but scientists have long known that the sun will die <laughs> the sun is our greatest enemy we need to ban the sun and make the sun illegal okay <laughs> the sun of what <laughs> <laughs> the sun will die and now we know what will happen next so new research by an international team of astronomers shows that once it exhausts its hydrogen fuel in five billion years or so give or take a couple you know a couple hundred million years or so our whole star will morph into an enormous ring of glowing dust and gas, what astronomers call a planetary nebula. <laughs> okay. <laughs> start planning for it. Yeah. Start, so I'm start, just, uh, all you preppers out there, get start prepping. We should make some laws about this. That's the first thing we should do to oh, fix okay. this problem. Maybe we can start taxing somebody because of it. Maybe yeah. the Californians can start taxing. <laughs> when, when is this time frame again? Five billion years. <laughs> yeah, a couple oh, days. I'm not worried about that, Dan. Uh, you know, shoot guns and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> shoot guns and have fun, yeah. Five billion years. Uh, do you think we're going five million years from now? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many other things that are going to happen before we get off by the sun. Um, yeah. So five billion years, that bad boy is going to go nebula. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh Hopefully, for, do you think five billion years from now we would be inhabiting other planets? Yes. Five billion years from now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm, this is a real article. I'm just joking around because, I mean, like we, we worry about all these things, you know. No matter what we do, nothing is forever. No, no. You know? Everything dies. Everything uh, everything goes back to dust, including the sun, including us. Everything's going to do that and then reset and start all over again. Who knows how many times the reset button has been pushed on this thing that we call life? This rock. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. This planet itself, I, I, I personally, I mean, this is going to sound like something from the Stargate or like <laughs> Alex Jonesy. <but laughs> Get who your hats, knows? get your tinfoil hats on. Who knows how many times civilization has started and ended here on this planet? You don't so. know how many times. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? None of you guys see, I'm sick right now. So 
I, I did not shout out the people in the chat. I don't know. Is anyone complaining about that? I don't see it. Is there anyone complaining? Shout out to everyone that's hanging out with us right now. Um, you know, shout out to all those people in the chat. Um, if you need, if you need particular shout outs, let me know. And we'll do that. I did skip over it. I'm, I'm like, I've been all messed up since I came back from the NRA show. So, well, see, I didn't go, so I won't get into that moan. You party yeah. that hard that you're that messed up? No, I didn't party. I, I, I don't know. I just got sick. People, people, lots of people. Yeah, they got the always got the mung. Well, you know, you know they said that show was um beat the record for attendance for out of all their shows, eighty, 80 was, something thousand, I think. What really? Eighty yeah. eighty thousand people? Well, they said it, it was close to eighty seven thousand. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I read that one earlier, and I was like, oh my goodness, that was. It, it didn't two, seem like it was two that days. Many people, yeah, it didn't yeah. seem like that many people. Um. I was gonna say it didn't seem Friday didn't definitely was nice. Friday was nice because there were people there, but it wasn't because I've seen it what I thought was more crowded. Maybe we were in smaller venues. And this was bigger because was that usually, one big was that one big hall? Kind of almost yeah, but they, they took up two floors. They did part oh, okay. of it downstairs and then the rest okay. of it upstairs. But um even so, like when you're walking to the restroom and to the other different rooms, it didn't seem like it was that many people in there. No, I didn't think it was as um because I've I've been at NRA show and everyone's just doing a little thing like this and you can only move like millimeters at a time. That's so right. and it didn't seem like that at this show. So That's what so was the record? Do you know Michael? Mike? Um the article that I read it said it, it topped the record. So um I don't oh, okay. know what the previous record was. Um hmm. but like I said, I know there was a few times when I had to get from one booth to another booth. Um, I was slowed down with people doing the, the crunch walk. But, um, <laughs> it only lasted for like probably about a minute or two. Yeah. yeah. But it, it yeah. happened a little bit each day at different points. Right. Exactly. Uh, Eric S. says, uh, yep, <clears throat> we here in Texas do everything bigger. <laughs> 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 and probably a lot of people came from all over Texas. So I was I didn't go back for Sunday because Sunday we left. So all right, my friend, see you tomorrow. Um, so Sunday we left there. You know, after like Lola and I did go get breakfast and stuff like that. And you did and feed her once. Room. You fed her once. Yes, yes. Oh, I was very I was very nice to Lola, man. I did all the work. I don't think Lola Lola was just hanging out, like having fun, talking to all the bearded tactical dudes. Uh. You know, every time I turn around, Lola was talking to some bearded tactical dude. Hey, Lola she's, is the hardest she's, working woman in showbiz. She deserved uh, a break. Uh, <laughs> seriously, Mike, you'll get on the show. You don't have to. You can tell the truth. You can, well, I'll be for real. She's <laughs> the hardest working woman in showbiz. She deserved a break. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we, we ran into GY6 vids and she lost her mind. Ooh. That's her. Fa that's her favorite gun YouTuber, by the way. Who's that? GY6 vids. GY6 vids. Yeah. You don't know who GY6 vids is? I'll have to check it out. I, I don't. I'm Walter, sorry. you are embarrassing me, man. What? You're I don't spend my day. <laughs> I don't spend my day <laughs> looking at videos. I mean, Look up GY6 vids. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing yeah, it right Lola, now. Lola, uh, we are trying to get him on the show, by the way. <laughs> uh, Lola, there was this video that he did back. I forgot how long ago that was where he was like washing his car. Oh, hot and, and sweaty. I guess, I guess he was partially naked and wet or whatever. <laughs> so Lola claims she was a fan before that, but oh, okay. she was definitely a fan after that, that. that. Okay. Well, all right. I've looked at, I've looked at it now. I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's a young fella. Yeah. Younger yeah. fella. Yeah. Jake Arnold wants to know if I met, did I meet Tim? I did see uh military arms channel. I saw him very briefly there at the show. Uh, no, actually I saw him at that cigar thing. Uh, very, uh, very briefly. And Richard Hughes says GY6 vids is like demo ranch with muscles. <laughs> so they you see the demo ranch guys running around in their in their fake beards and stuff. At I I saw I saw them, but I didn't know who it was. Hmm. I did see them. Are they trying to like be Duck Dynasty guys or something? Or what? Just in, incognito or no? You know he's always having fun. So just goofing off. Yeah. Yeah. You That's know. cool. And he was probably trying to see like. I, I don't know if he did this deliberately or not because I haven't seen any videos that he put out from there. Or he but, a FUD. Well, no, I think he might have been trying to see 
how people treat him if they don't know it's him because I didn't know it was him. Oh, okay. Because usually if people, he's kind of like a rock star. So if people know it's him, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Demolition, Rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe he was trying to see people like, hey, man, get away from me with that. Yeah. You know, nonsense. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know that if he didn't do that, that would be interesting to do one day for one of those like really big gun celebrities to get yeah. dressed up like that, you know, and see like maybe uh Hickok 45 or something that everyone goes crazy about or or Coleon Noir or something, just dress up like a bum and then walk <laughs> around there <laughs> and have like hidden cameras and see if people like do people treat you <laughs> like get away from me, dude. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. That would hey, be hey, interesting. Um, What's up? Getting back to that um record, I'm looking for the previous record, but um I can't find the number for what the attendance was. But the previous attendance held the 15 year record, but I can't find what the number is, and it just broke. Dallas broke that record. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Did you? I, I know Hank earlier in the day you um you posted on Facebook about Austin, is Austin, Texas, not wanting to sell their uh their police trade in guns. Mm -hmm. Is that them in the right city? Um, or they're thinking about not doing it. Yeah, that's that's one of my moderators posted that. Oh, okay. So uh, I'll go look it up. I can't By the believe way, someone someone sending me um, someone sending me it, what these are water guns. Are the Nerfs yeah. or something or what? Yeah, it says uh, these are Bad Boys Three approved assault guns. <laughs> <laughs> For your information, these are my uh, these are my this is my collection. It's a lot of cool water guns in here. Mm. I like all guns of all styles, including the toys. Mm. See, look, check it out. Look, there goes my mini. Do oh. do 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 do. Oh, look at that. Walter has a cool toy gun. There's the one that I found in the bottom of the uh, of the tank that I bought. Yeah, I called, Peggy bringing me something. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> I called dibs on that one a long time ago. Oh, look at that a little skin, a little. A little touchy, scratch on the chin there for you, touchy Walter. Touchy-feely, yes. That's so awesome. So that's my toy gun. Mike, do you have a toy gun? Um, I don't have a toy gun, but I normally walk around with Sally. Ah, uh, oh boy, I ain't no toy. Yeah, 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 no yeah. I yeah. just, I just, just walk check. around with Sally. Walter, this Walter, what do you got? The AK. Walter has the I AK. The AK there. Yeah. Yeah, that you almost got arrested for, or will, that, or something. That wasn't me. TSA pulled him aside for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was actually looking for um, one of those mini guns that y'all put together. But I didn't know where to yeah. look to get it. So. Oh, yeah, that was. Do you remember we were at the ATI booth? ATI right. Outdoors? Yeah, but I never went to the ATI booth. You did, Oh, you never you never met us over there? Nah, because um, remember I had texted you because I was over at. Um, I mean, Mike, you weren't you weren't part of that. Um, I'm getting the, here. That's, that's but he wasn't. You weren't he part, wasn't of, part the of the black, black the black revolution at ATI yeah. booth. <laughs> no, nah, not this time around. Knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it goes. Um, yeah, so Austin City Council decides whether to ban police trade-ins. <laughs> I mean, how stupid is it for a a city or a county or whatever to take perfectly good guns and like destroy them or something versus selling them off? So stupid. I mean, the only way they get a good deal on new guns is if they have trade-in guns. And yeah, yeah, it doesn't make someone, a whole lot of sense. Someone talked to us before about all the the places in Texas that are really very well, liberal. I think Austin, Dallas, right? Well, it's any place there's um a school, one thing, mm -hmm. and or and or places where the welfare is handed out. <laughs> I should say that. Um, yeah, used to be that in the old days when you had to actually go get it versus getting an EBT card, but. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Vanessa Kitty would like to know um, what type of lockbox do we prefer in in the vehicle to lock up our carry gun and the ammo <laughs> separately if you leave it in the vehicle? I'm not so, going to say a word because I don't want to. Yeah, I just get whatever is appropriate, but I don't. I wound up not using those things. I always have them somewhere in my vehicles, but I don't really use them. So I'm so uh, lackadaisical. I mean, so um, I have to say, but careless. Um, half the time I forget I have it in the car. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I guess that's just from being around them all the time. Um, I guess you get jaded. That can make you unsafe too. But yeah, you know, I don't know. yeah. So um, and then Cyrus three hundred eight says he played a lot of gigs down in Austin back in the day, and it was flaming libtard way back then. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Um, yeah, so there you go. Parts 
Right. And Eric S. says Austin is the worst. And Scorched Earth Firearms, Rod Mills, our buddy, he's in there. So shout out to him. So, um, you he's know probably what? Saying, Rod, he's probably saying Austin's got the best food. So what's he trying to get? <laughs> <laughs> Austin cooks the best. What's, what's he trying yeah. to get? <laughs> or, yeah, if, if, the women, if the women have the big butts, then Rod Mills I mean, is not he's, a, he's there, man. He's <laughs> yeah, there. he doesn't care what their per- political persuasion <laughs> is. They got the booty. You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to Rod. He's not going to discriminate based on that. <laughs> Did he drop um, the Dallas also? No, I think he flew. He flew. Yeah. He said yesterday that he flew in. So He said if it's more than six hours drive, he flies. <laughs> for that, yeah, for that so last little go. bit of the show we heard yesterday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and here's someone sending me some more uh, toys. This is Big Big Dick Willie actually sent me those. Mm. Those oh. are some toys from Big Dick Willie. <laughs> I actually Saturday. listened to the whole show driving back. You did? Okay. How was your drive? How was the show? Did we, you know, show I was, was kind of sick, so. No, the show uh, was good. I mean, I, it was, uh, it was good. Yeah. Usually when the, I'm made, sick, my voice gets real sexy. It gets like get real dark and deep. It gets a little bit lower. But Ooh, get that, get very white mode. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> I was going to say that. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very. Hopefully I, hopefully I kick this thing. Kick it. Yeah. Put yeah. some, um, put some no, in your drink. Some what? Emergency. That powder. Emergency. Oh, okay. Yeah. Emergency. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a drill sergeant, that's what I used to put in like my power eight. Um, two packs of it. Knock yeah. it out in no time. Yeah, Lola, Lola's got me in on a regiment of uh pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Bryant says the booty is bipartisan. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, to a limit, to a limit, man. Yeah, Seriously. I mean. When I was younger, I felt yeah. like that, but now I do, I really don't. I don't want to talk to anyone that's anti-gun. I don't care how cute you are. I, yeah, I can I, I concur completely. I mean, it, back in the day, it wasn't so much of an issue, but now these some of these libtards are so freaking out of it that, you know, they just I couldn't I couldn't live with somebody like that. I don't care how hot they were. Sorry, couldn't yeah. do it. So I don't know. What about you, Mike? Mike, you do you? Does that matter to you? Is that a factor? No, nah, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, okay. Do you think you can convert? So if you meet a chick that's anti-gun and she's you, really cute, you think you can convert her to being pro-gun? I wouldn't even waste my time. <laughs> you wouldn't even try. So you're just trying to hit it. That's it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not even in a hit factor. It's just more eventually when I'm walking around or my phone rings, it's going to be a gun conversation. And... You know, like I'm pretty sure when you talk to people outside of whatever you normally do, guns are gonna come up. You already know it's gonna be, oh, I don't wanna hear this. I don't want oh, okay. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta go. Yeah, okay. So you're saying you would not deal with that then. Yeah, you're exactly. You, yeah, you, okay, good. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, that's like dudes who who see like women who are lesbians and they mm-hmm. think somehow they can convert no, yeah, no. They can convert her back to the dick side. They're 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 yeah. they're, they're living a movie. And yeah, they, and no. They, yeah. no man, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Life ain't you no know, like that. Yeah, no. just go on that. What was the? What was the, the? Isn't there a place that for like gun guys? You know how there's like uh, Christian date and Jew date and uh, uh, farm dates and yeah. all kinds of crazy dates. Isn't there a gun date yet or no? <laughs> I thought there was right. There was. Second Amendment. Uh, oh, I think, no. Um, someone tell me. I thought this was true. I thought we talked about this one day, or someone sent me an article about like the dating for the gun thing. I don't. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, okay. Well, if that doesn't exist, someone needs to create that damn thing right now. Oh yeah, heck yeah. I don't yeah. think I can bring a woman around my family unless she totes a gun or is into guns. To be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there you go. A lot of the um. But when I met Peggy, she wasn't like anti-gun, but she didn't know a lot about guns. So, um, sometimes you're just going out and going shooting, and once they go shooting, they get empowered, and then they're like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, cool. but she yeah. didn't. But she didn't already. She didn't already come to that conclusion that oh, guns are bad. I'm not. You know, that's the thing that I'm saying. Like, no. there's people. If if you meet someone who's like, "Oh no, we don't need guns." No, just leave me the hell alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I mean, I'm not. I'm not in the market because obviously. Lola won the lottery, and I'm taking. Well, <laughs> once, <laughs> once, once I show her, once I showed her how to make money in um 
and you can make money with guns, then she's like, oh, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You know, that's yeah. always a very important thing. That yeah. makes a man, when you, when you have some money, it makes you more attractive <laughs> to the ladies. <laughs> well, uh, so Rod sending me pictures of his guns. There you go. Rod's throwing some guns up there. Rod Mills? Yeah, Rod Mills. Sending me some pictures of his guns, along with some other people. I'm getting lots of pictures and stuff like that right now from the peoples. Oh, hey, yeah. um, they're asking in the chat about to talk about the CMP 1911s. Did you yeah. see it? Did you see the email about that? Uh, no. Do you have that email? I know you were telling um, me about this. Someone shared it with me. Yeah. Pull but, it up. There's someone else sending me their toy, by the way, so you could see that the keyboard. Bottom of the That's line cool. uh, price on those are eight fifty. The, the worst ones? Well, I guess. The, the worst eight, conditions? Yeah. I don't, the best, best ones are going to go to auction. They're not going to be, you're not going to get a shot at the, the real collectible ones. But, huh. yeah, that's what they'll do. They'll put them on their auction site and auction them off. But let me see if I can find that again. Who yeah. sent me that? Who again? say says Big Daddy dating app? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. I think we can do the Big Daddy uh, right next to Big Daddy Unlimited, Big Daddy dating. Big Daddy dating. You know, <laughs> gun dates. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know what's a? I'm gonna tell you right now. A perfect date. I wish I could do. Go to the range, do some shooting, then have lunch or have lunch or breakfast and do some shooting. Just what? like I, I, I would go shoot, eat, go back to shoot some more. You know, do a number, a couple of number twos, eat some more. <laughs> <What> <laughs> you know, go back heck? to shooting. <laughs> If there was, if there was really, I mean, I don't know if there is a place where you could shoot and eat and everything. I would try to get an office in that building. I would basically never leave that space. Not I would too, do my show everything from there, man. Not too far from my house, there is thirty acres for sale, and um, I thought, man, because right on the main drag, road wise, I thought, man, I could have, I could build Manville there, where you yes. have, you have a motocross track. You have heavy equipment. People can dig holes in the ground. You have a couple tanks they can drive around. Okay. You have, I know there's going to be a Hooters. You have a bar. You got to go. I have a bar with scantily clad. Right. <laughs> a little hotel in the back, you know, for if there's relationships. Uh -huh. Hotel, and, and, motel, holiday inn. <laughs> and lots of and lots of people that can talk Chinese and Japanese. And, and, <laughs> and we're close to the airport here in Tampa. Boom. You know, yeah. next thing you know, I got Manville full of Asians digging holes yeah. and driving tanks. Yeah, man, that would actually be awesome. Yeah, shooting I'll guns, gun range too. Gun yeah, range too. and we'll put it off. We'll do the show everything from there, man. We won't. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah, just yeah. leave to get on the road and drive cars around. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Hank, was there ever a time it. when um, Lola had to like literally pull you off the range? Uh, no. No, I don't mm -hmm. think so. I mean, we do. She gets she gets aggravated sometimes when all we do is shoot on the weekends. <laughs> you know, she's like, uh, you know, we got to go somewhere and do something. So, but you know, mm -hmm. I, I go hang out with her every now and then, and and we do stuff. Even when we were, like I said before, we left Dallas, we went and we had uh we had breakfast and a really nice actually we had brunch or something like that. In a, in a nice restaurant there. And there was a mall connected to it in Dallas. I forgot the name of that mall. It was really nice. So we went walking around. We were looking at watches and stuff like that. Some really nice, expensive watches. You know, I was window shopping. And we left. That was like a date. But she she was she was like, you know what? We have a long ass drive. Let's get you it know. done. Yeah, let's get on the road. <laughs> let's get it done, yeah. So... I yeah. think she enjoyed it maybe a little bit. That that was like that was uh, my version of dating right there. Yeah, it. just me and her. None of no, the kids weren't uh, aggravating or anything like that. Not until I got back. Then then I got aggravated. Uh, what about you, so. Walt? That ever happened to you? Peggy had to like drag you off the range. No, not really. Because no, not really. Not like that, Mom. Not that I can think of. No. Oh. I think usually, like, the, I don't know about you, but usually for me, the range, like, makes me, it uh, mellows me out. So yeah. I know there's lots of people out there that think that when you go shooting, it somehow makes you some horrible, violent person. I find that when I go shooting, because of because of all the things that you have to focus on when you're shooting, if you, it's just like driving a stick, you know, or um, anything that you do that makes your brain and, and your, 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 um, 
your brain yeah. has to communicate with your hands work. and your motor skills and all those things have to come into play. When you do that kind of stuff, it unwinds you from a lot of other things that you might be thinking about or overthinking. So typically after I'm out there on the range, um, I'm ready for the love it. <laughs> That's what it is. Like I said, the range normally um, calms me down also, soothes me, puts me in that woosah moment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. shooting's cool. Yeah. Um, I like working on stuff like I work on getting something done. You know, you got a project you got to get done and you get some of it done. It's like, oh, that's off my head. It goes out of the head. Boop. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So and we were shooting yesterday, Walter. That's why someone sent me. I don't know what this this is a toy, but I'm, I'm not. Is this a G.I. Joe? I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got a backlight on it. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can make it smaller. If I make it smaller, that might make it easier to see. Is it like G.I. Joe seal or something? What um, yeah, I don't know. So I got that from Chris. But Walter was out there shooting with us yesterday, right, Walter? Yep, yep, yep. Went yeah. to um went up to Big Daddy Guns, um, saw the where Mr. Strange is doing his show from. I'd never been there before. Um we watched um folks get their hair done. Is that Mo is his name? Yes, yeah, my barber's Mo. He was here oh. yesterday. Artisan he comes artisan. in here once a month. <laughs> He's an artist. Comes in yeah. and sculpting the hair. Okay. Yeah. We've got some cool tools. He's got holsters to hold all the scissors and all. Yeah. And he's a gun guy. My barber is a gun yep. guy for anyone who wants to yep. know. We've got videos. I have a video out. Actually, I was going to talk about videos later, but there's a video I have out where this reporter is asking me questions in the barbershop. So. Yeah. So we saw that going on and then the other crew was uh, working, doing their thing while we uh, were creating mayhem. My son and um, Tyvin and his wife, uh, Babyface um, went through the uh, concealed weapons class with him real quick, um, so that so they can he can go get his concealed weapons permit here in Florida. Yeah, I guess Tyvin's going to get it too. Yep, him and the wife. Um, and then we went out to the hacienda and busted some. As I said, you know how you say you break bread with people. I said we we broke some caps. Yeah, with our, with our, yeah. broke some primers with our uh, with our friends. So. Right. And then Walter headed home and Tyvin came over here. Um, Cyrus 308 says he saw that video, by the way. Thanks for watching the video. Did anybody get an EPA violation when Tyvin was around? <laughs> get a what violation? I'm sorry. The EPA violation? <laughs> <laughs> because of his fuel spill? Yeah, he broke something in your shop, didn't he? Oh, well, what happened was he gets oh, to the boy. shop. No, he, nothing happened bad. He says... Can I test fire one of your fifties in your bullet trap? And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, because you don't let anyone you no, I don't, do the never, shooting. Yeah, I don't let anybody shoot the fifty cal one, and because I mean, some people, some of my employees have shot smaller guns in the bullet trap, but I usually do the test firing, like I did this afternoon before the show. So um, I gave him a couple, just do that, do this, and he put it up there, boom. So I took video of it, you know, and then he gets later on, he goes, "Guess what happened? Mm -hmm. I deleted the video." Oh. He was he was he was so sad. <laughs> so wait wait so you did you take your own video or you shot I, the video for him? I shot it with his uh, his phone, and, and he deleted uh, it. And he deleted it by accident. Oh, poor Tyvin. So, so yeah. I guess now when I when I when I go over there and do it because <laughs> you know, then it's actually going to be on video. So that'll be mm -hmm. the only time it's ever been done because yeah. if, if it's not on video, Tyvin, if you deleted it, it didn't happen, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it so, just never happened. That was why I posted on the Stranger Holics about uh, he's certified. Um, um, he's now officially certified a crash test dummy. That's what I call <laughs> myself, the crash test dummy, because I test stuff. You know, yeah. Like and <laughs> yeah. Oh, what the hell is going Sorry, on? Sorry, I didn't get that. Could you? Your mother. Something is. Uh, the government was trying to listen to me or something. Siri. <laughs> Yeah, Siri came on and said, what are you talking about? Um, yeah. But anyways, so yeah, he got to fire in the bullet trap, and he was ex very excited about that. Um, and I, and, and, and actually, it is kind of, a, it is, it's, I would say, scary, but it's, you know, you stick the gun in, you pull a 50 cal, you know, and think, oh, no big deal. Well, yeah, it is a big deal, because a 50 cal of a round going off, right, like, right there. <laughs> so, um, anyways, that's what I do. I'm jaded, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Right. Um, okay. So let's see here. Um, you know what? Let's go. Let, can, let's talk about this thing, even though Walter has no clue what Bad Boys 1 or 2 is. Go for it. Go Some for of the most, like, very iconic movies here that Walter's never seen. Okay. Unfortunately, he's not a movie guy. So no, let's I'm not talk. Asking. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, there's lots of different articles on this. So Bad Boys 3 plot details emerge with new release dates and massive $100 million budget. Holy cow. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, be a lot of and, CGI in that, I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll see, like, one of my dreams, Walter, and I think that we should figure out how to do this, would be, like, a dream job for me would be the guy on movie sets that's in charge of the guns. Oh, the armor. Yeah, that would be awesome. You know, I'm sure that guy has to be an FFL, which I'm one, you're one, yeah. right? You know, that would be a pretty cool job, you know, except for the fact that you have to work in Hollywood sometimes. But, I mean, yeah. you don't really have to work in Hollywood. Maybe if we can get, like, you know, our people, the the pro-Second Amendment people to start putting their money into gun movies and things like that, we won't have to... Uh, well. You will never have to work with Hollywood, but uh, get those movies made out of Hollywood, like in Florida and Georgia and stuff like that. Yeah, you know. yeah. So it says Will Smith and Martin Lawrence will take on a brutal Albanian mercenary. I'm. I, how much you want to bet that this movie is somehow found, fu funded by the Chinese? Why is that? Because they fund everything. The Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, man. If you go, you see, you don't go to the I movies think you need that to much. Go more, a little closer to home and, and do Scientologist. Um, because he's, he's a Sino. Let's let's look that up and see. Well, I can tell you right now, a lot of movies, a lot of movies that are out there, are funded by the Chinese. All these Marvel movies and stuff like that. It's all when you go to see the, when you go watch the movie, you see it. You see who's producing it, and it's a lot of Chinese companies. Well, Chai comes, Not really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. All of um, all of uh, were you just talking about like um, Tom Cruise? All his movies are funded by the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Well, so I think it more Scientology. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's going on. But uh, so let's see what it says. Did it? Uh, that's a lot of money. Belgrad. You know who that is? Huh? Doug Belgrad. No. Oh. Yeah. So he's supposed to co-finance it. Yeah, that's, he's definitely not Chinese. I, no. I would say that he's probably not. No, he looks like his <laughs> brother. That's what I'm looking at. So here we go. So um, after two years of Bad Boys for Life rumors and hype, it looks like the hotly anticipated third installment is actually happening. Um, the hashtag show revealed that Miami Narc's latest operation with exclusive plot <laughs> details. The, flip, the film will see Lawrence's character, Marcus Burnett, working as a private eye after... Um, a falling out with Will Smith's Mike Lowry, who's going through a midlife crisis as a bachelor who finally wants to mature, all while dealing with a new young cocky partner. <laughs> this this is like so. This is like Hollywood speak. Um, and so that's, I, and then the Albanian guy comes into it. I don't know why the Albanians have to be the bad guys in here, but I guess that's like the the reason why I mentioned the Chinese because when they fund stuff, they control who the bad guys are, and magically they're never Chinese people. <laughs> so there you go it's everyone else <laughs> you oh, know um, I, I can see this so there you go uh, so that's pretty much what it's going to be about that's cool I hope they shoot some of it in Florida maybe Walter we can go down there and we can get on the set what do you think we um, could be extras we could be you know you could be Albanian you could pass for Albanian I could pass for like Albanian with a tan <laughs> <laughs> we, could try, we could try to get on there maybe we could be like stunt doubles i don't know albanian with a tan <laughs> okay you know when they feel listen if they're gonna i don't know if they're actually gonna film how much of it they have to, sh to shoot some of it in florida so you know there'll be some of it obviously yeah, probably. in miami yeah yeah so you know I just saw something on the truth, not to change the subject about the movie, but um, I was looking around for new stuff on the Firearm blog. I guess the U.S. Army releases RFI for subcompact weapons for like sub guns. Where is that on Truth About Guns? Yeah, Truth About Guns. Yeah. You know, I, I, what I found was the last time, and it's kind of strange, they put out the requirement for um, basically the Rattler, mm -hmm. the short little 300 blackout gun. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I guess they probably knew Sega already had this, so they had to put the requirement out to make it legal. And then, boom. Oh, look at that. The Rattler. It's already there. <laughs> so it's like, hmm. Yeah. Because I, I, uh, I said I might be interested in you know submitting something, but never heard a word from them. So, yeah. yeah. And I guess I'm not, I'm not SIG, so. Yeah, a lot of those things are what I like to call preordained. Well, yeah, they know there's there's something out there already, so they have to legally put the requirement out, and they already know who they're going to pick. So, yeah, yeah. they just it's a matter of jumping through the hoops. Yeah, there's some there's some interesting articles there. Did you see this article on the truth about guns, the FUD manifesto? No, I've been. <laughs> yeah, ten, it's I think it's really uh, tongue in cheek. 10 yeah. responsible gun control measures we could all get behind. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so this is like talking about the the uh I'm gonna, I'm going to read down to the bottom of this article here because it's really um I think they're being very sarcastic in this article, but it says naturally the FUD constituency has come up with a list of dare we say common sense responsible gun measures that any Right-thinking person could see are both urgently needed and eminently reasonable. Bullshit. I'm just saying that. <laughs> uh, I just have to say bullshit a lot here so people know <laughs> that I don't believe any of this crap that's being said, and you should not believe it either. <laughs> it's so all bullshit. Yeah, so here's uh, – here, I'm going to go from 1 to 10, um, and we could talk about it. So actually, do you, should we go from 10 to 1 or 1 to 10? Which, which is, you can yeah, count let's down. Start, you want to count down? Yeah, let's, let's yeah, start at 1. Well, okay, you want to do the countdown? Yeah, 10 to 1. Go What's 10 number 10, Hank Strange? Tell us. Okay, number 10. Repeal the Dickey ban on scientific <laughs> research in the area of gun violence and implement the Institute of Medicine's 2013 gun violence research agenda. Dickey ban. <laughs> oh, my God. The gun <laughs> violence <laughs> research agenda. Yeah. Bullshit. Okay, we all know that's bullshit. Number 9. <laughs> enact gun violence Restraining order authorities allowing courts to temporarily prohibit a person from purchasing or possessing firearms when a family member, community, welfare expert, or law enforcement officer presents evidence of a threat. I think they can already do that stuff. Yeah. Well, this is the this is the crap that that people are going for that they think, you know. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Because that no, because that won't be used. People won't use that as a weapon. No, 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 never. You know, just because you come out against some politician and post it on Facebook, they won't call you crazy. No, 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 absolutely no, not. No. People are reasonable in this world. Yeah. <laughs> no bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. So, uh, not, number eight: prohibit sales of firearms except through registered licensed dealers. No direct private sales. That that's really a really really bad, really messed up. Um, thing that people think it's okay like first of all you know you're an ffl i'm an ffl you know that we all have to follow um certain rules and regulations there right but this whole thing that that you cannot sell a gun to your neighbor or your family members or your friends without going somewhere and going through a whole different background check and all that it's crazy it's a crazy idea man you know, and if and if people if people accept that, it won't be long till every single damn thing that you do, you'll have to go ask someone permission to buy or sell it. U ultimately, these things are property. Well, yeah, they'd like to control you selling your used car. You know, yeah. all these if, you're, if you're in business, if you're in business for this, I get it. Right. We're in business for it. And we have business licenses and things like that. You know, I get it. But for people who are not in that and they want to be able to do these things, why should they have to go through that? And when you pass on things to your kids and stuff like that, why do you have to go through that bullshit? No. You know, it's nonsense. Personal um, property. Yeah. Number seven, which is connected to this mandatory and universal background checks for all firearms. Uh, yeah. OK. That's I mean, and these are the kind of things that the people like if you if you don't know if you're a FUD, if you see those no FUDs shirts that are out there, you know, and you hear people talking about FUDs, here's how you know that you're a FUD. If any of this stuff that I'm saying, you agree with it and you think it's reasonable, you are a FUD. Go look in the mirror. <laughs> you are looking right now. At a FUD. That's who's staring back at you if you believe any of this bullshit. Uh, number six, prohibit any accessory designed or mechanical modification intended to A, increase the rate at which any firearm may be <laughs> discharged. B, to increase the magazine capacity of a semi-automatic 
rifle beyond 10 rounds except the 22 caliber rimfire. Anyone who believes that is totally... You're a FUD if you believe that nonsense. Right? Number five, let's see. Prohibit new sales of semi-automatic guns or rifles except 22 rimfire. <laughs> Why is 22 rimfire... <laughs> You that know, can we, hold more than you, 10 rounds. Have you seen what a 22 rimfire can do if it goes full auto? Yeah, but what they're saying is like FUDs believe that 22. Oh, because that 22 is so safe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah, I guess. 22 is the, probably the most deadliest round that we have, right? I think we've we've looked at some of these. Yeah, it before. used to be. I, I, I used to always oh, say it used 20, to be. 22 okay. and 25, but but still, it is it is a you get shot three or four times with a 22, you're going to bleed out pretty quick so if you get shot by a bb in the right place you're done oh, yeah. you know it, 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 especially if you know you know just it. say limit 22 to 10 rounds yeah that's what this this is what the fuds are calling for this is not yeah. me yeah no 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 I'm, I'm just saying like what you read but yeah I'm blown so, away with stuff. <laughs> right number four prohibit new, this is stuff like this article is saying these are things that fuds believe in okay not us we don't believe in any of this no one here believes in this right number four prohibit new sales of semi-automatic assault or tactical style weapons oh tactical style yeah those tactical styles so what is tactical style the who defines tactical style is in okay well uh yeah what's tactical style because black you could define that any way that you want to man so you paint a musket black it's tactical style or yeah, is it you, just defined as scary yeah <laughs> right, well, scary, once we yeah. accept that stupid tactical quote-unquote tactical style nonsense mm -hmm. they could define that thing however they want to it's tactical just like the whole style. bump stock situation right or anything that modifies the rate of fire situation once we get into that and we accept it that's that's going to creep and crawl into other things and grow and become a lot worse than that i think does physical so. fitness if you're physically fit does that increase your rate of fire I don't know. I mean, you, and you've seen me shoot like uh, yesterday. One of the videos yeah, we gone, did. Man. Yeah, we were testing. Uh, we were testing Franklin. the. Yeah, the Franklin Armory binary trigger for the CZ Scorpion. I finished editing that video, by the way. Now, here's the problem. That video can't go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. So, tell me. And I, I, I was after watching you guys shoot and I shot it too once. Mm -hmm. um, was Tyvin just unable to make it go binary or was that? He uh, and it's not in my video, but at the end, uh, uh, I think Tyvin figured it out because I saw him do it. And it happens to me even when I run it, but I'm not as bad as Tyvin. Tyvin stops at the reset. And I think when you stop there, it's obviously not going to work. It's just going to go bang. Yeah. Bang. What you have to do with those triggers is pull it and release it fully and pull it again. And even me that I shoot on the reset. So see, I don't do that reset stuff. Yeah, yeah, I shoot on the reset. So as soon as the, the gun resets, I so if you look at how when I throw up that video and I am going to put it up somewhere where everyone can see it and then I'll let people know where it is. But if you um, and there's a hint, it's going to be on excluded. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is that if you shoot like Walter or Babyface, it works even better, right? Because you guys just let go of the trigger. Uh, just, uh, yeah. 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 And so it works better that way. I think Tyvin had a little bit of that going he on. He was but. like granny in it. I mean, I don't know. It's like, don't, 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 don't. I'm like, why isn't it working for Tyvin? I don't yeah. know. But he got it. He figured it out at the end. I just didn't get it on my thing. So I didn't. Tyvin might put that in his video. We'll see. But yeah. it works. The trigger works. Uh, we got the prototype. It works. Yeah. And I will put that video up so everybody could see it. Um, legally, uh, I'm not going to put it up on my YouTube channel because YouTube being a bunch of Nazis about that. <laughs> Nazis, and that's yeah. so funny, Colin. Would the Nazis? Be, yeah, they would be against gun videos. Yeah, they would be. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the they Nazis. I don't think the Nazis wanted anyone to um, learn learn about guns or use guns. I think also slave owners didn't want that. I think also communists and uh, uh, socialist yeah. people. Well, that fits right uh, into dictators YouTube, dictators don't want that yeah. uh criminals don't want the people to have guns <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the truth about guns here i, I see an article i have an article about uh i think it's not truth about guns about a junkyard owner in kentucky used a revolver to defend himself fight off a couple robbers yeah yeah, yeah. good yeah we'll be tagged those guys up pretty good <laughs> the guy's like 78 years old too so he's yeah, a i'll tell you that's why we need these kinds of things man people always say oh how about a fair fight <laughs>
Yeah, well, yeah. When if you're a little old lady, seventy eight year old, or just a woman or whatever, you're going up against a big dude or whatever it is. Fair fights, bullshit. You're an equalizer, man. Equalizer. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's hit number three, two, one oh, here, oh, yeah. and then we can go on. So number three, anyone on social security disability due to mental illness may not purchase or possess firearms. Okay, that's one of my favorite subjects. Who determines who's crazy and who isn't? Um. Once Who we let that, determines yeah, that? That's the problem. That's the problem. And some what do we some say? bureaucrat, you know, some uh, uh, appointed official. No. Yeah. No. And it's so subjective because I think we're all a little bit. So, like, a, like the vet. So, vet goes in and he's, you know, he's feeling a little down. He goes to see the doctor, and all of a sudden, he's crazy. Yeah. No, that's not right. Yeah. yeah. Or obviously, they 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 go into combat. They see things, deal with things. They need help. They go right. talk to someone to help them, and now we get crazy. help. And now we we limit what they can do to defend <laughs> themselves. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really, really bullshit. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday with the whole Daniel defense thing that right, happened right, right. that went down. Number two, anyone on the terrorist screening center's no-fly list oh, may not geez. purchase or possess firearms. <laughs> once again, that's <laughs> another one where crazy. you can't. Once you get on the list, you can't get off. <laughs> you, they won't even tell you who's they won't even tell you who's on the list and if you're on there or you're having problems and you're trying to find out if you're on the list or why you're on the list they won't tell you if you're on there or why you're on there so then again once again it's just a matter of some guy and saying hey let's throw him on the list he won't be able to get any more guns you know exactly. yeah he, 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 he said bad things about my my political partner friend there let's put him on the list yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so crazy. But yes, FUDs do believe in that. And the number one most stupidest thing that I've seen in this in this whole thing, the number one thing, and it's happened, and, and this state of Florida has done this bullshit. Oh. Any, I, I'm sorry, excuse me, an age minimum of 21 years to purchase any gun, which is so stupid. That is totally ridiculous. Yep. You like mean, I you told know. you before, first thing I did when I turned 18, I went out and bought a shotgun. That day, boom. You know, just because I could. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's so crazy that, you know, you're an adult. We say, I, I think you're an adult before you get to 18. Well, but, depends you know, on act, yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's true. But definitely at 18, <laughs> we say you're an adult. You could be on your own. You could be emancipated. There's people that don't have uh, parents and all that kind of stuff. And at 18, they're on their own. Yeah. Or for whatever reason, they're separated from their parents and all those kinds of things. Sometimes for a good reason that they need to get away from those people. You're on, and, and in a place like Florida and lots of other places, you still need to be able to defend yourself and hunt and, and defend your home, etc. And we're now saying to those people, no, you can't do it. No. Nah, you're not old enough. You're not yeah. responsible enough. We're gonna yeah. let you be the victim until you're 21. Now you can come vote. You can come vote for my anti-gun ass, but no, you're not. You, know, you can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah, and there's and this is why I think lots of these politicians are fuds. The ones here that I spoke to that did this, um, like uh, Keith Perry, he said that he think he doesn't even think you should be able to vote until you're 21. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, that came out of his mouth. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, this guy's definitely be 21 a fraud. today, then 15, 20 years from now, they want to bump it up to 25. <laughs> they won't wait. They <laughs> won't even wait 30. that long. <laughs> well, unless you're illegal, then you can yeah. vote when you're 12. But if that's but, the case, then at 18, you shouldn't be able to go into the military. No, exactly. Nope. You know, nope. there's lots of things at 18. You shouldn't, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to pay taxes. You shouldn't. There's all, no. all kinds of things that shouldn't happen to you. If you do something, if you do something wrong, you shouldn't be what held about, accountable you know, as an adult at, for that at, thing at, that at, you did wrong. Yeah, at 18, they throw you in the big boy jail. Yeah. yeah. You know, for women at 18, 19, 20, shouldn't be able to have if someone has sex with you, then that's wrong, too. Right. I mean, what are we talking about here? How far, like, what what other things are we going to push this to? Because if this is only in regards to guns, then it's obviously against the Second Amendment. Well, like, well, we see, like, uh, Eric S. And driving, too. Driving a car, man. You can't drive a car until you're 21. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> 21. It's like, it's bad enough some of these, well, anyways. So Yeah. So there's lots of things wrong with that. But anyway, I thought that was an interesting article that I'll bring up. I don't know if you guys have some articles that you want to jump oh. into. But that's uh, that's how you know anyone that's telling you that they're into this crap, 
make this your uh, checklist because anyone who believes in this crap, they're definitely a FUD. <laughs> well, you know, um, Bank of America, um, they gave loan money to Remington and they said they wasn't going to finance any type of um, companies that produce firearms. Oh, hmm. when did they give money to Remington recently? Yeah, this was today. I read this today. On, uh, oh. Yeah, it was like about two hours before the show. Really? Okay. Do you have an article on that? Uh, let me pull it up again. I, it was on guns.com when I pulled it up. Yeah, Bank of America. I don't like them. I don't care. <laughs> um, um, guns.com. Where did you say it was? Guns.com. 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 Oh, guns.com. Okay, let me see. Let me pull that up. Guns. Oh, there it is, right at the front, man. Bank of America is to supply Remington Outdoor Company with loan. Yep. Okay. I mean, that's probably not a bad thing. Well, you know, they had that whole stance that they wasn't going to do it, and you know, like they're trying to mess up the industry, like trying to tell you what to make and how to make it. But I, I figured it was going to reverse sometime or another. There must be some. There must be some. Uh, Maybe they are, maybe Remington already owes them money, so they figure yeah. if they're yeah. going to get some of that money back, they better they better they better give the addicts a little bit more heroin so they keep yeah. paying. Or it's a um, plot. It's a plot to get ownership and then shut it all down and melt the guns. It says Bank of America will join half a dozen other banks in providing a lending package to Remington Outdoor Company as the gun maker prepares to emerge from bankruptcy proceedings. Although the bank announced last month that it would stop financing companies that make military style guns for civilian use, which I don't know what the hell that means. Um, Cause it's actually the other way around. These are all civilian guns mm -hmm. that are then adopted right. for military use, but the deal was made beforehand routers reported. Okay. So this uh -huh. deal has been in the works. BOA is contributing 43.2 million to a 193 million lending package funded by seven banks. The loan will help put Remington back on a stable footing as it re-enters an uncertain environment for gun makers. You know what I would like these gun these uh banks to do? All of these banks that believe that shit should tell should no longer have armed guards in the bank. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Practice. Well, make it, it's a yeah, it's a it's a guard free zone. See what happens then. Yeah, right. yeah. Don't don't protect the money anymore. Let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that one works for you. <laughs> how long that lasts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, anyway, so I guess, you know, I don't know whether that's a good thing or bad thing or whatever. You know, we've we will see what happens yeah. there. I think there could be some kind of conspiracy there with these people who are obviously anti-gun getting their their mitts. Yeah, the, uh, the finance type people. that Well, they don't care. They're whores anyway. So it doesn't matter how the money comes as long as it comes. So, yeah. Yeah. Did care. you did you have any stories, Walter? Um, it up. I'm, 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 I, yeah, I'll be looking. I'm, I was looking at this 70 year old junkyard owner fights off two, two robbers with a revolver. Yeah. This guy looks like a tough old fart, man. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I mean, you know, he's old enough to be like your son or something like that. <laughs> <An asshole. laughs> And we're, and we're and they show a picture of the gun he used, man. And it, it ain't like a it ain't a fancy one or nothing. It's an old school thirty eight revolver. It looks like, man. What is it? Does he, do you know what it what what, what um, brand or? Uh, it might be a Smith. It's got a it's got a logo thing on the grip, like a emblem, but I can't make it out real clear. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I guess the uh, the two men are still on the loose, but I guess he fought them off. So that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Matt Davis, uh, go, going back to what we were saying before, Matt Davis says the left would die if we said, okay, no guns till 21, no voting till 21. Yep. No voting. Oh, yeah. oh what yeah. do you mean? You can't do that. Well, what yeah. do you mean you can't do that? You're going to take away the rights? Take away all the rights. Um, I think there should be background checks before people can vote. Yeah, sure. How about that? And I'm let's, all for let's having apply all these things evenly if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to do this type of shit. You want to vote? Okay, we're going to background check your ass. <laughs> well, nothing <laughs> else. That? You got to have proper ID, you know, which a lot of if they fight tooth and nail, too. You need ID to get a freaking cell phone. You need ID to do every other thing. But when you go to vote, nah, you don't need no ID. Yeah, let's run it through a system because yeah. this is a this is a thing that affects the country, right? Yeah. They're not happy that they got Donald Trump. <laughs> 
You know, we want to make sure the Russians aren't hacking us anymore. I know there's three Korean guys that are real freaking happy that Donald Trump got elected. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that the ones that returned back to the US last night. Now those guys were Americans. Of They're Asian Americans. descent. Yes. Yeah, but they are Americans uh, of uh Korean Americans, I guess, you know. Yeah. But they're real they're because if it would Barack Obama or someone like him still you know, he'd be sitting in some fucking gulag in North Korea still. Because yeah. none of them have enough nuts to, to stand up to that little dictator. Yeah, those guys were under hard labor. Listen, it's a good thing. Uh, listen, sometimes I think I said this before, right? Sometimes people need to see you act a little bit crazy, you know, to go. Crazy to people only understand fucking crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can't throw a sane person against a crazy person because it's a crazy person going. Ah, I'm not worried about him. He's no, no. But when you throw somebody, it's equally like, God damn. You know, they go, oh, whoa, shit, he's for real. <laughs> he's yeah. just like me. <laughs> well, to me, I equate it to like growing up in New York, right? If you're, if you, if you, anyone who knows about New York City, if you act real nice all the time, no one will have any kind of respect for you. You got to act <laughs> crazy just like everyone Get else. Get out of my way, you fucking asshole. Yeah, when you act like that and people think, <laughs> if you act really nice and polite and everything, they're like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Let's kick his ass. <laughs> And take nah, 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 on the horn, man. Uh, get the yeah. Out. yeah, let's take his money. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, uh, I think sometimes you know you have to act like that. So, well, in in the world when you got you got a dictator that's pushed it, that his whole family's pushed their way around and stole money from people that wanted to like placate them. You know, it's like it's like saying to the bully guy, "Well, you be nice. I'll give you. I'll give you what you want. You just be nice for a little while. Maybe nice for a couple of days, and then right back to their old stuff." Yeah. You know, if you stand up to a bully and punch him right in the face, he goes, whoa, shit, this ain't going to work no more with this dude. <laughs> yeah. So Rodney Brady wants to know, why do we care about North Korea? We got uh, better shit to worry about. Well, let's say this. If the North Koreans do some silly shit like launch a, a ballistic missile someplace, they could start World War Three, or World War Three and a half or whatever. Um then you got to do something. So, yeah, you don't want that. Nothing. Oh, excuse me. Let me back up. They export a lot of that technology to people that don't need it. Like the Iranians. The Iranians and the North Koreans are good buddies. Mm -hmm. um, so you just don't want some of these people because they're going to use it like a, um, what do you call it? They're going to use it like a, they're going to hold it over your head. Well, you're not going to, you're not going to attack me. I got a nuke. Yeah, you know, I'll look this guy, you know, and it's like uh, you got to give me your my money. You got to give me that hundred and fifty billion dollars like we gave the Iranians. Yeah. Um, Ghost Tactical says agrees with you, says, unfortunately, we have to worry about all threats. A crazy man with nuclear weapons is a major threat. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you could stick a you can stick a freaking nuke in a in a sea container and it could show up in a port here and go off. You want that to happen? Really? <laughs> or you want you, you don't want that to happen so you got you got to be on you got to be on the lookout for these nuts and anything could happen in a nation w where this kind of stuff is going on these people are like starving to death and riddled with disease and all kinds of stuff something crazy is going to go down at some point you have to you have to realize that like obviously you know he's got there there i'm sure his inner circle of guards and all that are well fed and the people around him are okay but you can't have everyone else in the country starving to death like this yeah. right and then it just keeps going eventually that's gonna that's gonna erupt that's how you have uh coups right something's gonna happen look yeah. at that look at that soldier that defected and they shot him and they, when they took him to the hospital he's full of worms you know that's yeah. uh you know that's pretty bad when you're when your guys in your army are all ate up with worms inside i mean yeah. that's that's pretty nasty but if you don't want to worry about these guys, you could just go with my plan. <laughs> and uh, that's just bomb the shit out of them. <laughs> well, see, Trump, Trump stood up to <laughs> Trump stuck up, stood up to the little dictator and um, and 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 did what he did. At least my opinion. And he's listened to him. Then it's like, and the Chinese said, "Well, you better oh, come here, come here." Why do you think he rode the chain to China? And the Chinese said, "Chill the fuck out, okay? Because um, we don't want to lose all that business from the U.S." Yeah. So without, so without us buying the Chinese crap, the Chinese economy goes. Yeah. So so Rodney says he understands that, but why not Myanmar or the CAR? Uh, what is the CAR? I'm Myanmar, not. Are you talking about Burma? Um, 
I'm guessing. Listen, oh, there's well, a lot. On, wait, ultimately, ultimately, ultimately there's a lot of places. Um, you know, ultimately, oh, around the world, there's lots of places that there's lots of problems, and in some. In some respects, I believe that people have to, like, people in those countries have to solve their own problems, right? But there's ways that whether we leave it alone or we do something, that it always affects us. So if we leave it alone and people are trying to get out of that country, they try to get out of that country, they come to America, then they try to make America like that country. <laughs> yeah. You know, or worse. And that's always a problem. And if, and then, and then, Obviously, when we go in there and we mess around with stuff, then it becomes our problem now. And we have to, like, spend yeah. our blood and treasure and all that kind of stuff to deal with what's going on there. We and, and still people hate us. That's why, like, I believe in my solution. You know, I don't think you guys really want me to be a world leader. <laughs> because I'll be pressing the hell. I'll be smashing the hell out of that. Putting that, that button. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. You know. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Um yeah, yeah we I will be developing drones that will just like go right in there, man, and find you and just crawl right up your ass and explode. You know, I'm, I'm all about that. All <laughs> right up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at some point, like there's there's things going on here that someone has to deal with, and no right. matter what, no matter who goes into office, we're dealing with this one way or another. The problem is they're just always giving these guys what they want. Right, uh, right. You can't and, can't do that. All you know, Bush, Clinton, all the other ones, all they all placated. The we, we don't, and we don't know yet with Trump what he's going to give them. We don't know yet. I don't you think know. he's going to give them anything. Well, okay. who knows? In the end, there'll be there'll probably be a little bit of swapping, and but um, you know, you gotta you gotta stand up to him. He's always been against this. You know, even when he way 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 before he was a president, he was always saying we need to stand up to these Koreans, and mm -hmm. he's doing it. You know, I mean, nobody I else. We, Nobody else has been able to get what he's done, do what he did. So I think we have the uh, ability to nuclear strike people's asses or if you don't even have, if, if you don't want to go to nukes, you can go to other things first. I yeah, you, know, you can Korean, hit people think, up with Moabs like it's going out of style. The, the Korean military has been built into this. The North Korean military has been built into this this uh, paper tiger, I guess we'll call it. You know, look at the guy that defected full of worms. How long do you think the North Koreans could feed their army and fight? Uh, they yeah, they couldn't. They could. I think. They I can't. think the fact that you see these guys come into the table like this is a sign that they that they know they're about to break. I'm just telling you, they know that stuff is going. Yeah. They, well, you, you know, know the, Kim Kim Jong Un knows that he is about to wake up. <laughs> you know, the yeah. Chinese could get tired of his ass and just take over too. Don't forget about that. Chinese could do it right. in, a, in a second. So, um, but they don't want to take over that shithole, and that's what North Korea is at this point. Where everybody's everybody's been, um, you know, it's just a it's it look. You seen the satellite images of South Korea and North Korea at night? South Korea is all lit up, and there's like five light bulbs going on in North Korea at night. You know, and that's that's a shit. That that's shows how we you, know where to bomb. <laughs> that shows you how backward it is because no, everybody's sitting in their hut in the, in the dark. Yeah. You know, I, wonder how, the, um, I wonder how they're going to restructure the government. You know, with North Korean leadership, with South Korean leadership, or are they going to keep it the same and just keep have the border be open? I don't think that's going to happen, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think if if Kim Jong Un leaves there, you'll see him all of us just sneak out in the middle of the night <laughs> with, <laughs> with with whatever money he has and go to like Switzerland or something. Yeah, no, he'll end up in, in, in with Mugabe or something, or in Zimbabwe with one of those one of those Marxists down there hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna? The Swiss aren't gonna take that. Yeah. J Rock. <laughs> go ahead. They don't want that little dictator in their country. They don't want. Yeah. Um, so people are really picking up what I just said about, about the drill. J Rock says, Hank Strange 2020, uh, quote unquote, I will ass drone you. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> you're ass droned. You're out of here. Yeah. Forget that you're fired that. stuff. You're ass drone. <laughs> Yeah, if I could be one, if I could be like uh, Elon Musk, I would, I would definitely work on the Astrons. <laughs> yeah. Nano, is that nanotechnology or is that just yeah, full exactly blown? this? Like these drones seek out specific asses. And next, you're sitting there in your chair, and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, boom! What happened to you? Oh, I think I just got Astron, dude. <laughs> that someone will do make a T-shirt that says "Don't Astro me, bro." <laughs> 
Oh man, that's funny. Okay. I gotta yeah. turn the air conditioner on here <laughs> for a minute. I'm getting a warm. Uh Ghost Tactical says, Hank, that's your new patch. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to uh someone needs to draw that up right now. <laughs> like a dude, let's draw up like a little Kim Jong un or something. And there's a there's an ash drone coming at him, and it's like whining. It's yeah, and he's looking back like, oh shit. <laughs> what is the word? A Korean word for and like? Then, and then his T-shirt says, "Don't astro me, bro." Aye. What's your? Is there a Korean word for like? Oh. <laughs> well, Cyrus three oh eight says, uh, "Hashtag ash drone sounds a tad gay, fellas." Okay, <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Funny though. Yeah, so I'm not discriminating. <laughs> yeah, we're equal opportunity Astro. Yeah, here. we will LGBT <laughs> Astro. <your> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All Enough right. of that. Enough of that silliness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the, it's like the Iranians too. You know, we've we've we oh that whole agreement thing. You know, and and and. If you, if you, I was, when we were riding up to your place or up to Big Daddy Guns yesterday, they were talking about on the radio. First thing, nothing was, there's no ratification. There was no, nobody agreed to that agreement. It was just Obama saying, hey, I like you guys. We'll agree to this. The Iranians didn't sign the agreement. It's one of those, it's one of those things that's like, WTL for what the hell happened here? Well, yeah. Come to find out, you know, when you dig deeper, a lot of these businesses want to have business with the Iranians. So that was a payoff to get things kind of open for the businesses to get their butts back in there and make a lot of money. So uh, it's just bad. You know, they're, yeah. they're out there. They've been in a proxy war with us for years. How many, how many Americans were killed in Iran in Iraq with uh, Iranian designed uh, roadside bombs and equipment and bomb, and weapons and explosives, you know, it's, and they were teaching those people how to build that stuff. We need to finish those guys off too. Boom. See ya. Yeah. Do we? Um. So I know that we sent money to Iran, right? Did they get all the money? That all, were all the payments made? Because I know we sent cash. There's supposed to be 150 billion dollars in cash. <laughs> Pallets of hundred dollar bills. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen those movies? And I hate to bring up movies, Walter, because I know. Go for it. Go for it. You know, have you seen the movies where the guy's supposed to be getting the payoff with the suit with like the briefcase with money? Yeah. yeah. And then when he goes and opens the briefcase, it's a bomb. <laughs> that's that's that must have been an Israeli thing there, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what we need to do with like I don't understand why we didn't do that with that payment. Whoever got that money should have should have their assets should have been in the center away. of the in the center of that pallet of money should have yeah. been a small thermonuclear device. As soon as yeah. uh the big the big mullah pulls the lid off it, they do yeah. <laughs> because you know that money came back at us. You know, yeah, they, you know, they, you know that money has been used like against Israel and stuff like that. Right now, I saw that Israel this morning was oh, like, yeah. they, they put the, they, they put were throwing the hurt, bombs, they put the hurt on Syria. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, they were I mean, saying that that the, that the Russians have been building the Iranian nuclear stuff, generation electricity, power plants, and stuff like that in order to pay the Russians. We gave them the money, and that went that money went to Russia. To pay for a lot of their nuke program yeah. and when the iranians a couple months ago were protesting in the street and all that stuff was going on they're all pissed off the people are like we're, we're out there having a hard time where'd all the money go well the money went for terror and to pay the russians and and yeah. to pay off hezbollah and, and and send weapons to isis and everything else yeah i think that's one of the things that made people in america really really mad i know it made me really mad you know, yeah, because like, imagine, like, do you remember? I mean, at least we know Floyd Mayweather had to get into a boxing ring <laughs> and and kick get McGregor's. A few times, right? Yeah, yeah. He had to get in there and go toe to toe with McGregor and kick his ass or whatever to get his money. That you remember when he when May Mayweather got his money, he went to the bank and he had like uh, shopping carts full <laughs> of money, and he was taking it out to his SUVs, and then he went to his strip clubs and he was. Just Making yeah. it rain on the strippers in a strip club. What the hell do we think those guys did with this money? They're certainly not taking care of their people in Iran, so um, they're spending it on terror, you know, and, and financing their weapons programs and stuff. And, and um, yeah, that was a Trump did the right thing. And guess what? The next day, the sun came up, and the birds were singing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Why? They, you know, the world's still just everything's still going, man. Nobody, nobody yeah. get, 
It's like when the when Trump uh, said to the Israelis, "We're moving the embassy back to Jerusalem." Everybody's like, "Oh my God, the world's going to come." World to War Three is upon the, us. The Arabs are all upset. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, you know, I'm not not to say that that some nothing. stuff won't won't nothing. go down at some point, but nothing. Things happen even when we pay, made the payoff. Shit still kept happening or yeah. not happening or whatever. The world. These people don't really care, man. They just take that money. Frick, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just hope that the, they the, just that money just went to uh, goat strip clubs, basically. <laughs> they bring. They probably had seven forty sevens full of goat girlfriends coming in. Yeah, uh, goats, goats, <laughs> and donkeys. Yeah, donkeys yeah. and goats. Yeah. Lots of goats were abused by that money. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of an ad you could have on the television. You know, they have the ads here for save the save the animals and save the kids all over the world. Mm -hmm. Save the goats. <laughs> save the goats. Yeah, Nico Ghost Gunner says helping the enemy used to be called treason. Now it's called foreign aid. <laughs> yeah, well. The whole treason thing, that's yeah. that, uh, that there's some people that, you know, have really skated on that, especially the last name's Clinton. So ask the Haitian people how well they're doing because of the Clintons and um, yeah, and all, that, all that money. Yeah. yeah. So, OK, what else? Let's see what else we have going let's talk on about here. Something fun. Yeah. What? OK. You want to throw up? Do you have some guns you want to throw up and show oh, us? Oh, man. You know, um, well. I show it to you if I had it here, but I, yeah. I took my grandfather's old 22 to the shop today and uh, actually cleaned it up and fired a couple rounds through it. So, right. by the way, someone's trying to. I see there's someone trying to discourage me from asking people to do the thumbs ups. I would encourage you guys to do the thumbs ups. Okay, thumbs do up. it. Yeah, thumbs us up. Don't listen to whoever whoever that is saying that the thumbs ups don't matter. I, you know, whatevs. Throw them a noose. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh can we can we uh, I'm going to press the button. Can we ass bomb that guy? <laughs> can we ass drone him? <laughs> like, you know, it's coming at you right now. Call out a call out a, 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 a butt strike. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's do the thumbs ups. Let's get those going, you know, uh regardless of the people. The fact that someone's coming in here and taking their time trying to discourage us from getting thumbs ups. That like in my world, when you tell me don't ask people to do the thumbs ups, I go, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do more thumbs ups now. That's like telling somebody that's oh, you you can't tell me what to oh, don't go there. <laughs> Where they go, right over there. You know, it's like, yeah, exactly, exactly. I oh. always tell people if there's a rule book, you tell me the rule book so I could break all the rules. <laughs> the speed limit's fifty five, Hank Jane. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> 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 you know how we feel about that one. All right. <laughs> speed limits are unconstitutional. Yeah. Uh, I, I know the... that by how you pulled out of that parking lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, did you guys? Uh, you guys didn't hear that, did you? I didn't see that. I wasn't there for all that. Yeah. Hear oh. it? I heard it and saw it. I was like, "Oh, he's gonna hit that curb!" But oh, yeah. <laughs> he saved it. <laughs> You're gonna be like one of the Mustang driver videos on YouTube where they crash the car as soon as they take off. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, I saw I saw some video of a guy crashing into someone in an R8. Actually, oh yeah, there's this video. Yeah, there's this video that I saw that um, these guys were driving a McLaren 720, and they did something with that and lost control somehow and smashed into a guy sitting parked in an Audi R8. Mm -hmm. So that's like two beautiful cars down the drain right there. That's an insurance man's nightmare. Yeah. So. What's All right. The so, max speed legal limit in Florida. DG's asking or Doc DG, DGC 44S. Um, uh, on the interstate, it's 70. 70. 70. Yeah. But the uh, but the real speed limit on the interstate in Florida is 85. So. Um, yeah. And we never we never break we never break the speed limits in Florida. We always we always <laughs> obey the rules. Law-abiding citizens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We are. We never. We <laughs> always go by the rules. I got. I. When the I work for the speed limits, we obey them. When I worked for the city of Clearwater, one day I was out driving around in one of the trucks, and I uh, was going down this road, and this person literally pulled right out in front of me, and I was sliding with the brakes on, and they kept turning in front of me, so I hit them. I hit him broadside, and um, it was two. Pe they were both on crack in the car. The one guy took off and left his girlfriend there. But anyways, oh, um, so the cop asked me, "How how how fast were you going, sir?" And I was I was going speed limit, officer. And he said, <laughs> he says he says that's the right answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
Uh, by the way, Walter, you know what? I have not even shot this yet, man. This is my Steyr Aug. That's a real Steyr, isn't it? Uh, well, what do you mean, real? Yeah, this uh, is from Steyr. This, Steyr, from, Steyr. this is from Steyr, made in Alabama's. That's all right. Made in the Alabama's, and have, it uses it uses P mags. I'll have to bring out the uh, Microtech, and we'll have a. Uh, yeah, we need to have a, a Steyr Aug uh, shoot shoot off. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Me, What's up? Um, tell me what you think about um. What's your thoughts on the Aug? On the Aug, um, this was, this is obviously not the last bullpup that I'm gonna get, but. Um, I've taken a long time to get a Steyr Aug, and when I first got into bullpups, I, you know, I kind of didn't like the Steyr Aug. I know it's some people think it's ugly or whatever. Uh, you know what? But, I think but I like. Time, the, go ahead. I like the way the fact that it's a clean design. Yeah, as time has gone on, I actually like the way that it looks. And like I said, I have not run this one. I have shot Steyr Augs before. I think they're cool, and that's why I think as you as you go on in this gun thing, your your tastes refine a little bit, or maybe they get worse. Who knows? <laughs> After all, I do like high points. <laughs> but um, you know, so I I uh, I just all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I have to have a Steyr Aug in my collection. So. Here it goes. Yeah. It's in the collection. We need to shoot it. We have like so many videos that we, of guns that we have to shoot. So, yeah, I mean, so I it's on the back burner, but that's that's my gun. Yeah, mine has the um the the old school style um um up the sight on it, the scope on it. The little, yeah. I guess one or two power, whatever it is. I like it. You know? Yeah, yours is a Microtech, right? That's yeah, correct. Have, correct. Yeah. Correct. You have the Microtech knife and everything that it came with. Yeah, the whole package. Yeah, I got suckered into the whole thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, maybe I get that out. Let me see if that's here. Yeah. Oh, just uh, I, I want a Microtech knife. Do you do you have any of the out the front knives, Mike? No, I don't. Um, you know, I'm not really like him. Um, the knife that I do have, um, like the Smith and Wesson knife, and then what I got when I was in the military, what was issued to me, or what I got from a deployment. Yeah. But years back. Huh? So you're not into knives. You're not into knives. I take it. No, not Sorry, really. Oh, okay. You're not into knives. You're in bad company because Walter and I, we like knives. We How like many times knives. you cut yourself? There you go. Oh, I have cut myself a few times. <laughs> yeah, but that's no big deal. <laughs> I still got all my fingers. Yeah. yeah. Still, you know. <laughs> well, uh, one time, um, well, that was with too much alcohol. Uh, I got a scar that goes halfway around this finger, right, the, right there at the base. Yeah, that's from drinking too much and playing with a knife. But, yeah, uh, listen, it, I don't want either one to happen, but cutting yourself <laughs> is always better than shooting yourself. <laughs> yes, any day, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, but hey, so that there's your, now yours is from uh, Microtech. Microtech, correct. Yeah, and this came in a whole case and everything, which yeah. we can't show you guys right now. Yeah. And it has the optic and it comes with the knife. This is like a very collectible piece, MSAR. There you go. Walter Microtech, will never give this up. I've tried to buy it from him. Microtech doesn't do these, make these anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's why. That's why Walter's never given them up. The only uh, thing about it, it has a proprietary magazine, which is, I guess, a Steyr type mag. Yeah. Do you but, still uh, shoot it? Pardon me. Yeah, we've shot it. Yeah, we shot it. Yeah. yeah. It likes, unfortunately, it likes brass cased ammo. I haven't tried any of the newer polymer case, uh, coated steel case stuff, but. Um, when I first got it and tried the steel case wolf, it got stuck in it. So, hmm. um, yeah, and and I think some people have. Uh, John Gillian says dibs. Walter, he says dibs. First dibs on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's cool. I mean, I I I like the. Oh, that was good. I just pulled my, just pulled my stuff out of my. What I like the way that, I like the way that it works and it operates. I just like the style design because, like I said, it's clean. It's not. It's not overly plasticed up, <laughs> whatever that means. But how much how did much you, you offer, offer him, Walter? I mean, uh, Hank, how many Walter books did you offer? Uh, oh, no. No, he didn't even, he didn't take offers. <laughs> <laughs> Walter wasn't trying to hear it. No, I, I had to plug my, I, I, I hit the, the butt of the rifle, hit the cord on the, uh, on the earphones and pulled it out. So, but anyways, it's cool. Yeah. By the way, I see 904 Outdoors in the chat. He says, Augtastic. Uh oh, 904, you're so creative. Shout out to, um, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to 904 Outdoors. We uh we need to do some, we need to uh like do that video. And yeah, speaking of videos, we've got several videos coming up, or we've actually got some videos out that Lola wants me to remind you guys. We have the uh Henry X, 
right, that you guys heard about. So you, I don't know if you heard about it or not, Mike, but they were at the NRA show. Henry Rifle doesn't do SHOT Show. They do the NRA show. They had some cool things. Basically, there are handguards now available for the lever actions, shotguns, rifles, and stuff like that. And uh, there you go, Walter. Look at that badass knife that Walter has. We've also got uh, one of the... You know what? I'm going to go into knives in a, in a second here, Walter, since you're pulling out knives, man. What is this one? MSAR right there. That's the one that came with it, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's badass. So the, so here's the thing. We also did a video on the Taurus 692 and the Raging Hunter. Someone asked me about the 692, which Taurus is coming out with. That's the one you could take out the cylinders and do different calibers. So there's a video up on that on Hank Strange. And I encourage everyone to go to Hank Strange. Check those out. If you're if you're watching on Hank Strange, you're watching this when we rebroadcast it tomorrow um, or not, whatever. You also should make sure you're subscribed to uh, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. We also have a video with Carolina Arms 1911. I think it's the Trenton Presidential, which is like a thirty thousand dollar 1911. Oh, holy cow. Yeah. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Uh, it's got gold. It's got like mammoth bone grips and uh I think 24 karat gold and all kinds of stuff, wow. handmade, all that kind of craziness. And then we have um, from DTF Industries, uh, DTF Industries, which if anyone wants to know, DTF stands for Down to Fiesta. <laughs> That's what they said. Uh, and it's called a safe space. So basically it is for, you know, if a like if, if you guys have ever seen a, a Glock or any of these kinds of pistols go out of battery, it's designed for a Glock to keep it from going out of battery. We have that video up as well. This is extremely orange when I look at this, and I'm probably super orange too. Something's up with the lighting here. That we you're gotta cool. get you're right. still, you're still uh, the chocolate. Uh... Yeah, okay. Still yeah. the chocolate goodness. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 we've got some videos over there. You guys check that out. Now, Walter, we're ready to talk about. Uh, Mike, do you have some? Okay, let's see what Mike has. He has an M&P knife. So, you got a knife. Well, I got a couple knives, um, like this one. I got when I got back from Iraq the first time off the initial invasion. So the, the company gave every soldier that was oh, in the company cool. one of these. Sweet. And what is it? Uh, Gerber. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah. And I, and I saw that Gerber is making out the front knives now or the automatic like front ejecting. Yeah. yeah they're making some of those now. Uh, Walter, what do you have? <laughs> I put the microtech knife back. You put the knife. Oh, you put that back. Yeah. You want to see it again? Knife. All right. I know you got some knives. There. Okay. While Walter's get, did you have another one, Mike? No, no, just these two. I just... oh, okay. That okay. microtech knife also comes with this nice uh, sheath, um, nylon type sheath arrangement with a what do you call it on the back? Uh, oh hell, my brain went. Molly. Yeah, Molly. Yeah, that Molly stuff. Yeah, and. <laughs> And there's a microtech again. Yeah, this yeah. is a seriously thick. I like knives that have a really um, solid, heavy-duty blade. So if you have to use it, you can really beat on it. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a, nice a good. Thing. It's a yeah. good survival slash hunting knife. Yeah. Speaking of which, I've got this is from OKC. I've got two of these from OKC that we're going to be doing some knife videos on. And you guys can let me know what kind of stuff you want to see when we do the knife videos, actually. Yeah, you want to torture test them? You want to... uh, yeah, we're going to cut some stuff or whatever, but I'm trying to figure out what people think is going to be cool. So this is the SK4 Blackbird what? from OKC, Ontario Knife Company. There you go. There goes the Blackbird right there. That's pretty... That's a really nice knife right pretty there. Badass. It looks nice. Very, very solid knife, good in the hand and all that kind of stuff. Got this from, um, you can get these from Brownells. So there you go. So that's the, the OKC4 Blackbird and this, or SK4. And this one is, I think, I'm trying to find, figure out exactly which one. This is the Rat 5 here. And this one is really cool too. This is also from AKC. Tell me when it's time for Gorn. Okay. Check that out. Because I have some really special It cords. has its own sheath and all that kind of good stuff right there. You see that blade again? Look at that. Look oh, at I like that. that. I like oh, that. Look like at that. that one. That's badass, too. I like this handle. Yeah. You know, the Rat 5. That's what this is called. There you go. What's, um, your, um, what's your top five knives that you like? Who, me? Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that I really have, like, a top five, you know? I don't I don't really I know I want an out the front knife. I want an automatic knife, probably something from Microtech or one of the other companies. I'm trying to figure out like what 
route to go. I don't know if people have preferences out there. I know uh, you won't feel right until you get a Microtech. So. Yeah, so probably that's like on the wish list. Um, Do you have a top five, Walter? Oh, knife? Um, I would I probably say companies. I like Spyderco. Spyderco is a good company. They don't for have, I, would, I wouldn't mind getting a Gerber automatic. They got some cool knives. Plus, I like I like like the one that Hank had or, or this one here. I like knives. With, the blade doesn't have to be real long, but it needs to be thick. Mm -hmm. So if you need to really hack on it or pry with it, you can you can do that. This is a Schrade. I mean, yeah, I like the handle. Um, yeah, I'll tell you a story about. I had a knife just like this, and I took it hunting one year. It was brand new. Um, I dispatched the hog with one, with one nice blow to the back of the neck, and then I lost it the next day. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so wow. this is a replacement that I bought, and uh, now they're made in China. The one I had before was made in the U.S. So, oh, man. Um, I'm still hunting for that original U.S.-made version of this. So, What's the most you ever spent on a knife? Ooh. Um, well, the Microtech that I have, the folder, I think is $1.50, 150 yeah. So that's about the max I've done. Yeah, some of those some of those go to like over two hundred. Oh, like yeah, easy. Some the, 250, 300. Yeah. The ones that go straight yeah. out the front. Um, yeah. I forget what they're called, but yeah, they can easily go that much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I you think you want to. I, I try to stay under that three hundred. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can get a lot of you can get a lot of decent automatic knives for way way less than that. Yeah. So. But you could go really. You could go way up from there too. Like I've seen oh, three thousand yeah. dollar knives or six thousand dollar knives actually. Um, I think I've seen nine thousand dollar knives. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah, custom stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to look this up. I forget the name of the I forget the name of the company, but one of the one of the people that's um that's doing stuff with Le 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 Leviathan, they're a custom knife maker, and their knives were like eight nine hundred dollars a piece. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't look anything special, but I guess they are. I, you know, I'm not talking bad about them or nothing. Right. No, no, I don't think it's – look, it, when you're talking about custom-made knives and all, when you, once you get into that game – like anything that you get into that game that is custom-made, look, it could be yeah, expensive, man. man. I guarantee you there's million-dollar knives. Yeah, yeah. You know, made so. with moonbeams or something. Or they make them with like the yeah. – when they make them out of meteor, um, meteor yeah. iron, you know. Kind of like yeah, that 45 made with a, with, out of a meteor. Yeah, and then the, then the kinds of steel and how it's like the Damascus right, right. stuff or whatever, but that's not right. super. That doesn't make it super expensive, but it does make it more expensive. So, I'm on this website, Exquisite Knives, and yeah. they have one in here for twenty three thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, but you know, for some folks, twenty three grand is that's chump change, man. That's pocket. That's pocket. Yeah. You go and throw it my way. Uh, <laughs> I'll it a few times. <laughs> yeah, I, I carry my revolver in single action. Says, "Oh hell yeah, they got knives in the thousands." Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's knives that go over that, and then you know, obviously there's knives that belong to like imagine a knife that belonged to Elvis or something like that, right? right. Oh yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Some yeah, of that remember, stuff. Go yeah, ahead. I remember a couple of years ago that they um he had a 380, and they auctioned it off, and they bought in some big bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big so the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know that th I think that goes with anything. Um, I remember. So um, my um, there's this. Uh, I don't know if you guys know William Bethards. He's a competitive shooter. I've done some videos with him. He he works for the FBI Training Academy, oh. and he's a competitive shooter. He shoots for Cabot Guns. And whenever I do stuff on Cabot Guns, usually a shot show or someplace, Cabot Guns has these like ridiculous 1911s like thirty thousand dollars is you know low budget in, in in their thing and whenever i ask him that question about the price of their 1911s i think at the time they their entry level was around seven thousand for a 1911 i think they've got some entry level now that's around thirty five hundred four thousand or so but i asked him about that and he's a competitive shooter and he told me listen man i have ten thousand dollar 22s <laughs> wow you know, <laughs> oh, so wow. that's the thing. Well, like, and, here, and there here, are ten thousand dollar twenty twos. There's real badass twenty twos. That's here. Right. Here's a here's a five thousand dollar rifle right here. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I mean, it all depends what you want. You know, if this was an original FT forty two transferable machine gun, it'd be maybe one hundred twenty five, one hundred fifty. 
thousand. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess it all depends on what your your flavor is, so to speak. Yeah, there was um um there was a the other day I was and this is a complete this is like a watch thing, right? The other day I was watching this auction where a Rolex that belonged to oh I forgot what star it is. It's uh Paul Newman, I think. It was a Paul Newman da Rolex Daytona, okay, that he owned. It belonged to him. And whenever that Rolex came out, back in those days to buy a Rolex like that was maybe three, four thousand dollars at the most, if that. That Rolex sold for seventeen million dollars oh. wow. at auction. Because, because it had Paul Newman DNA. Yeah, it was all. It was a very rare Rolex. I think on their own, without anyone uh, famous owning it, yeah. it would be like around a million dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. So the fact that he owned it, you know, so so that's the weird that. thing about this, and that happens with guns. It happens with knives. It happens with cars. Yeah, it happens with all that I kind just, of I just stuff. Never thought of it from a knife standpoint, like. That just blew my mind. A six thousand dollar knife, you know. That, but they're six thousand dollar sneakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know that one. <laughs> but I just never put it in perspective of like something that I paid thirty bucks for. Yeah, people you know? pay a thousand dollars for a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I just found that out the other day. I think those Supreme t like I didn't. I never realized that Supreme was like a brand. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I'd never heard of it before. Well, actually, it's actual clothing. Yeah, huh? it's an actual uh, clothing company. Yeah. yeah, it's a clothing company, and they sell they sell stuff. You could buy it in the store, and the T-shirt would have been like 150 bucks or something like that in the store. But they make limited ones, and all it is is a T-shirt with a with uh, with red letters that say Supreme. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so, so because they make it in limited things, people will camp out overnight for a couple of days outside the store. For a yeah, then they'll buy it for like 150 bucks and then sell that thing on eBay for $1500. Yep. Well, if you're you know, a full I could say a fool in his money soon part. Yeah. So, there's all kinds of craziness like that in the world and uh, I guess. Yeah. I heard about speaking of tennis shoes, I heard somebody I uh, heard a story recently where this kid got attacked in either New York or one of the place about a pair of uh, shoes he had on, but come to find out they were fake. Ooh. Yeah, I think he got killed for his shoes. Oh man, and they were fakes. Yeah, because there's a lot of that going on. Kids are wearing this stuff, and they can't obviously afford to do it. And then they buy the fake stuff, and it's terrible. You shouldn't kill someone for for Fair anything, shoes. anything like that. But yeah, but that Fair kind of craziness shoes. happens, and people are, yeah. So it's it's you know it's the price that we put on it. That's the crazy thing about the free market. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if someone's willing to pay for it, hey. Yeah, I mean, I have a tough time selling the T-shirts on uh, Fortune Freedom for twenty bucks. Damn it! Hey, you you know, your, well, uh, because twenty bucks, <laughs> a lot of people's twenty dollars, man. That's yeah, to most people. Yeah. That's that's. Want to hear um, a Jordan shoes a Jordan shoe story? Uh oh, go for it. All right, so I got this thing against parents buying their kids Jordans because you know, like how kids go to school and try to rub it in the face of other kids who can't really afford that product. So um, I was at the Phoenix airport this one day. And I saw this little kid in um, a pair of Jordans. And I turned around and I literally was like, man, another parent bought their kids some damn Jordans. Little kid turned around. It was Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Real story. <laughs> uh, that's the comedian, Walter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, He's short. He's uh, he's really he's height challenge. Isn't Kevin Hart the guy that's got the studios in Atlanta? No, no that's no. Tyler Perry. That's Tyler Perry. Oh, Tyler Perry. Okay. So, no, Kevin Hart is a comedian. He's a comedian. Yeah. Okay. I've heard yeah. the name before. Yeah. But he's a little dude. He's a little dude. He makes Lola look tall. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Oh, uh, I think I think I've seen him where he's making fun of his shortness. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If if you saw a comedian making fun of his shortness, that would be. Yeah. He knows he's short. <laughs> he's so damn short you can't. <laughs> and I believe I believe what Mike is saying because he's a little <laughs> tiny dude. <laughs> You know, but he's a baller. Mm. Well, that's all right. If you if, if you can afford it, hey, I got no problem with it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. This that's yeah. the thing about that's the thing about stuff, right? You know, that's if you want to if you want to buy five thousand dollar pair of tennis shoes, may the force be with you. You know. I mean. Yeah. Exactly. 
you know, and sometimes sometimes people inflate the prices on their things. Just, like you could take that like that patch you have right there, Walter. You should make that patch ten thousand dollars. I bet you you'll sell all of them. Which patch? The patch you got on your hat and right there. Oh, oh, oh okay. That's the no. isn't that the Trump dog? The Trump, That's the Trump dog? dog. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. Yeah. This year the dog. So. Yeah. I, did you forget that you had that on? Well, that, you know, I. Yeah. Look. Yeah. There you go. Oh, and you were. Oh, of course. Look at that, Walter, representing for the Hooters. Yeah. Yeah. How many times a week do you go to Hooters? <laughs> <laughs> Seven days a week. Okay, he's like. Oh, uh, by the way, we yeah we, we went with Tyvin. Twi twice on Sunday. Twice on we went, Sunday. We went with Hooters with Tyvin too. So, uh, who is that that goes to church? Uh, my dad grew up like that. Uh, what is that? There's a thing where oh my gosh, I can't. My dad grew up as one of these. Uh, there's a religion where they go to church like uh, they're Christians, but they go to church every single day. You know, really? seven days a week, twice on Sunday. That's how my dad grew up. Wow. So that's why he always wears suits to this day. Yeah, you tell yeah. me about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got in yeah. trouble for going to Hooters one time. I, be I bet you did get in trouble. Not from the military. I got in trouble for it. Oh, because you went to Hooters? Yeah. Oh, were you you, at work or what? Yeah, were you on duty? <laughs> did you take the Humvee? And <laughs> I was in um, Florida doing a funeral detail and I was uh. there for a week. And uh, one of the guys, I was like, where y'all want to eat at? Because we had just got finished for the day. And um, he was adamant about stopping at Hooters. And I was like, dude, I'm not really fond of Hooters, you know. So we ended up going to Hooters and we sat there and we was eating. And then, of course, you know, they give us a travel card. It's a credit card that you use for your travel expenses. Uh, they know where you went then. Yeah. So I went in there, you know, charged my meal on my card. And then um, next thing you know, the, um, the guy, the captain that was running the finance, he called me up and was like, hey, what are you doing at Hooters? And I was like, okay, um, I don't drink. Um, we're just eating. <laughs> we're here for the funeral detail. You know, then he was just, he just gave me advice, like, don't go there. Any establishments that serve beer, you know, just don't do that. So I got like a smack on the wrist, but it was kind of embarrassing when I got back to the unit. Okay. So if you go to a dry strip club, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to take the chance to find out. <laughs> I, I would find one and go there. Uh, by the way, I think that was Seven Day Adventist. Someone could tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Scamp 900 says it's a cult. I believe that's Seven Day Adventist. They go to church like uh, every single day, I think. I calling Dr. Day and Dr. Yeah. 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 Watchdog says Twin Peaks is much better than Hooters. I never even heard of. Uh, that's another, another. But I can't tell you, Walter, the last well, time I went to Hooters was um, 2009. That was the last time I went to Hooters. Oh. Yeah. And Matt Davis wants to know if the women are topless at Hooters. No. No. <laughs> no. no, not at all. Not at all. My, so. my wife's the one that likes to go to Hooters, so. Sure. She is. Oh. When she's on, you can ask her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Hooters is like she their goes, local. Look, look, when I'm not around and, and, and my boys are like, we go, so, like, go to Hank's Go Shoot and it's a Saturday. Where she go to lunch? She goes to Hooters. Hooters. Yeah. yeah, she goes without Walter. She yeah. talks to. She knows the girls behind the bar and stuff. She talks yeah. to them and stuff. That's <laughs> like their local. That's like their cheers. You know, like everyone knows your name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But every picture I've seen that Walter uh, posted is always the same waitress. Oh, well, you like Melissa? Melissa too. Um, could be Melissa. That's why I know Hank likes Melissa. So yeah, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna deny it. I'm not gonna deny it. I'm gonna have to go up there and go with you. Go up there on the weekend or something like that. We'll have that. to arrange that. Yeah, we'll make sure. Yeah, she's absolutely. Working. Absolutely. Peggy's got her all the number and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, but Peggy does. Yeah. So you say yeah. Peggy's part of the hiring um, process? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Walter just goes there for the wings, man. He's just going for the wings. Yeah. Yeah. He's not go. You know, they have to force him to go there. They have yeah, to. I <laughs> Yeah. You gotta drag him into it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, let me see. If I'm making a choice, should I go to this restaurant with just dudes or something, <laughs> or should I go over here to the Hooters? I think I think I'll go. I think I'll go to the Hooters and enjoy my meal. The scenery's better. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So. That's all right. Uh, so Carl Compton says him and his girlfriend like going to Wing House in uh, Dayton. And they want to know if we've been to the wing house. I've been Dayton. to wing house. There's one right down the street from the Hooters on in Clearwater. Um, oh, okay. I think I've been there before. Yeah, I've been. I've been to a, a couple wing houses actually. Yeah. yeah, I think I went to a wing house in like Coco or something like that. Yeah. So they're all right. 
Yeah. You know. All right. So it looks like we hit the nine o'clock hour here. I don't know if we even spoke. We, we didn't even talk about Big Daddy Unlimited. So let me get my little pitch in there for you guys. If you haven't heard about Big Daddy Unlimited, there's a link in the description here. It is a subscription based access to, uh, you know, what we would call dealer prices on guns, accessories, uh, things like ammo, all that kind of stuff. So if you buy a lot of ammo, you buy a lot of guns, even if you don't buy a lot of guns, you just buy stuff like once a month or whatever, you can save money. It's $10 a month, $120 if you count it by the year. And you save a lot of money from there. There's lots of folks in here who are doing it right now. Go check that out. It's in the description. And there's a link to it in the description. I'm going to uh, pass it on to Mike here to tell us what he's up to and what he's doing before we wrap up here. I'm um, just living life, enjoying the moment, um, knocking out some emails from um, the NRA convention. Um, still trying to get my hug from um, Kevin. <laughs> name calling. <laughs> I'm going to get that hug, but I did snag a hat from him. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can tell you one thing. Kevin was hugging uh, American Gun Chick. Uh, Man, uh, I'm trying yeah. to tell you, every time yeah. I went to him, he just ran. Ran the yeah. opposite direction. I think you I need like, to start wearing pink and you will get hugs. <laughs> Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> no. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go get a pink shirt and, be like, and a blonde right, wig. Up? That's what you yeah. get a pink shirt and, and a blonde wig and uh and bejewel everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But um, outside of that, um, I don't have anything else going on. Um, just going ahead, hitting the range tomorrow, and I'm throwing some bullets down range and um, getting ready for the competition season. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Walter, what are you up to? Oh, let's see here. Tomorrow, actually, this weekend is the air show at McDill Air Force Base. So um, me and a couple of the military vehicle guys are going to be bringing our trucks out there to put it in the display inside one of the hangars. Um, so if you're going to McDill Air Force Base, anybody for the air show, stop by. Say hello. I'll have, the, pin, cool. I'll have the pins guy over there. Very nice. So going over there tomorrow to set up, and then we'll be there over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I had, they, only, they only have the air show at McDill. They used to have it every year, but now they have it once every five years because of sequestration, that goofiness. So um, get to see the airplanes and go check stuff out. And what exactly is sequestration? For those That's where they cut back all the unnecessary stuff from the military, I guess. Okay. So I guess they consider the air shows and public uh, displays of uh, awesome. You mean we can't see the stuff we pay for? Hello. <laughs> you know, um, that makes no damn sense. We pay for it, but we can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, we get yeah. cut out first. See, that's why I need my own damn F-15 fighter jets and I Tomahawk want, missiles. And Tomahawk missiles. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah. Tomahawk is actually. A, I want the little engine out of a Tomahawk. It's got a little bitty jet engine there. I want one of those. But nevertheless, anyway. So we'll go on the air show this weekend. Uh, I'll be at the shop in the morning briefly, and then it's off to McDill Air Force Base. So. Oh, okay. And speaking Very of that, I need to call a friend of mine. Yeah. But um, cool. goodbye. You gotta make, <laughs> no. Yeah, you got to make plans for yeah. that. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, we're, we're, we're wrapping it up right <laughs> okay. now. Hold on. OK, so I want to thank everyone in the chat. Thank everyone for thumbs up. And if you did a thumbs up, please do that right now. We, we do need the thumbs ups regardless of what people say. Hey, you know, there's we, we want to do everything we can do to get this, uh, get the show ginned up and going. If you're not able to thumbs up, uh, share, like, comment, do all those kind of good things. Thanks, everyone in the chat. Thanks, everyone that uh, sponsors us. That's Big Daddy Guns right there. This guy from Safety Harbor Firearms, Walter Keller, and the rest of the Killer Keller family. Yeah, <laughs> as well as Andrew's Custom Leather. And, of course, ATI Outdoors. And I want to remind you guys to go to HankStrange.tv, put in your email address. That's how we give away things. We also uh, we put out a newsletter, email newsletter. Um, every week, actually tomorrow, we're going to put one out and I give away my, my phone number on there. That's how people send me messages and show me all their cool stuff. Like what Walter's doing. They send me pictures of their guns and they chit chat and sometimes call me and I actually talk to people. So we put that in the email list. If you want to know about that, go to hankstrange.tv and put it in there and you'll also also see other ways to sponsor us. We are on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. Um, th did I forget anything, guys? Did I? I you caught it all, man. You're pretty yeah. good at that. Absolutely. Thanks to Mike from MW Tactical. Make sure you go follow Munitions, Weapons, Tactical on all social medias. And, of course, go to Safety Harbor Firearms. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're on the Twitters. Yeah. Okay? All of the go above. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're out of here. Peace. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Later. Bye. We're out of here.